Hello and welcome to the meeting uh, for the select board for February 28th, 2023. Uh, we have a myriad of people, town clerk, town manager, uh, myself, Mike, Linda, we're missing Tom and Mark right now. Uh, hopefully they can pop in shortly. Uh, let us stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. First on the agenda, we have the approval of our meeting minutes from February 14th and February 21st. I believe all three of us were there for both of those meetings, so we are we have enough to 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 make the vote. Correct, uh, Patty. Do you need two separate motions, or can I just uh, motion to approve them both together? You can do it together. All right, yeah, because I didn't see anything to change, so I just make a motion to approve the minutes from both February fourteenth and February twenty first of twenty twenty three. And I'll second it. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, say yes. 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 Yes for me. There you go. <laughs> go. Um, all right. We have our first public comment. Are there any members of the public here for public comment? All right. Uh, then I'll close public comment and we will go to our public hearings. We have uh, first the adult use storefront for Kind Farms and the marijuana caregiver retail store for Fi Kind Farms. James? So um, we have no active um, complaints in terms of nuisance. We did have an issue that was brought forward during the Web City Greeneries hearing about a dumpster that was communicated to us that was supposed to be screened. Um, Irish has been looking into um, the site plan, but at this point, I would recommend approving both licenses with the condition that if there is a site plan violation found, the applicant shall come up with a plan to address the issue where the board reserves the right to revoke the license until it is addressed, as is with our license anyways, they have the ability, the board has the ability to do that. Beyond that, for like a code issue, is there any other lease issues, traffic issues that we should be aware of? Just, um, I think just that general area, there's traffic issues, but I know Paul is uh, willing and able to, um, when the time comes and the results of the DOT study come in, um, I think that's when we can have a larger discussion on um, a fix. But uh, in terms of um, you know uh, issues with the store, uh, I have not heard anything into that nature. Paul, is there anything you want to say? Anything you want to add? Um, I, I did speak with uh, Irish earlier, and the unfortunate thing is I'm, I'm 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 remote. I'm traveling right now, so I don't have everything in front of me so i couldn't look at the plans um i did speak with her and i did i did remember that uh, when we were going for the first building that we uh we were going to enclose the um uh the trash uh dumpsters uh and then i think uh our hang up would have been somewhere when we were designing the second building and then we actually tried to put them both together and create a garage in the middle of them so um i honestly don't know but if it's if it's something that we have to do i mean that's you know we can easily uh put up a fence around those that's not that's not a large issue whatsoever we're perfectly willing to do that if that's the case any other comments or questions from the rest of the board then i'll hear a motion um, I think we got to do these from separate. So I will make a motion to approve the license for the adult use storefront for Kind Farms. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, aye. For me? Uh, yes. 
And when when and then, I used to do this before, Tom would go all through the names. Would you prefer if I do that? <laughs> Either or. Uh, I mean, you, I think you have to. I think mean, yeah. you have to do a roll call. All right, I'll do a roll call then. And for the uh, second license. Uh, so and then I'll make a motion to approve the license for the marijuana caregiver retail store, Ken Farms. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? Mike? Ah, uh, yes. Linda? Yes. And I'm also a yes. So we are all set with Paul. Great, thank you. I'll be in touch, James and Irish, and we'll um, we'll get to the bottom of uh, of this issue. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Have a, have a great day. You got. It. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. All right. Uh, next, we have the adult use cultivation facility, Eleven Pond Road, Leb City Greeneries. I believe the two outstanding issues that were identified that were um, the reason for the application being tabled. The board was waiting for proof of uh, purchase of carbon filters and the installation of se the security gate. I understand Jameson has purchased the carbon filters and had plans arranged to install a gate today, but I'm not sure if that happened today. I would highly doubt that it happened today. I don't know if Jameson's here. Yeah, is he here? Is he Zoom user? Okay. Um, on the basis that we don't have him here, and um, have, have we have we actually seen the receipts for the carbon filters? Hey, I gave Jameson the uh, the notice, and he. I talked to him today. I told him that he needed to be at this meeting, or that we were going to push him off. He says he wanted to be at this meeting, so I don't know where he is right now. I think it's perfectly fine to. If he's not, if he doesn't, if he's not here, then um, we can table it to the 14th and get those receipts and maybe he can reschedule his gate getting installed. If it's installed, then kudos to the gate company. Yeah, no, why don't we just give him to the end of the meeting? Maybe he's just having a connection issue. And then if he doesn't appear before the end of the meeting, then we can table it to the next. That's fair. We will put a hold on this until we reach other business. And at that point, we'll either approve or table it. Yeah. Okay, so that is the end of public hearing. Um, we don't have any reports of committees, do we? I see Jeremy down there. Is he here for a report from our committee? <clears throat> I'm here. Well, yeah. I, is this where we would be talking about budget stuff? Nope, not budgets. Just just reports of committees. If there's anything new to report for just the committee stuff, budget will come later. So I do have something to share, but I think I'll probably just save it as part of the budget conversation, if that's okay, James. Good deal. I mean... <laughs> It's fine. All right. So we have a department report from Josh Jones, Director of Recreation. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Can I haven't tested my audio yet. So can everybody hear me? Yes. We got it. Hi, Josh. Hi. So I just had an idea for an adult sport, uh, an adult activity that I wanted to run by you at the Memorial Park. Um, I'd kind of prefer to do it in person and I'm not in a rush on it. If you wanted to table it for the next in-person meeting where I can just go ahead and we can try it over the, the Zoom. No, it's fine. Okay. Well, I, I was I was mulling around the idea of a adult kickball league. Um, 21 and over, it's a social sport. Um, but we do have the no alcohol signs at Memorial Field. And I just wanted to run that one by you and see what your thoughts are on that. Uh, I don't believe there's an ordinance that's, uh, that makes it an illegal activity, um, but it is a social sport that does most likely involve um, the consumption. So your thoughts on something like that? If it's consuming on the field, then it's a no. But um, I know for a fact that we have had a, an adult softball league use the field 
uh, this past year, my neighbor was very vocal about it and how much she enjoyed it. Um, and they're always welcome to go right down the street to uh, to the um, to the brewery there, um, Corner Point. So, but uh, yeah, I think a adult softball league sounds like a lot of fun. But um, yeah, we're not going to have any alcohol on the field for a myriad of important reasons. Copy that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We'll get back to you when we get to the uh, with the budget stuff in a in a bit. Yep. All right. Um, we have a presentation from the planning board, I believe, about the changes to the land use ordinance. Yep. Um, so, uh, but we had a bunch of meetings with Christy Rabaska um, with the MS4 general permits. Um, a lot of it was just changing, uh, updating stuff to um, meet their expectations, I guess. Uh, one was adoption of specific erosion and sedimentation control standards for proposed developments. Another one was requiring timely maintenance of private stormwater infrastructure after construction and updating schedules for enforcement and requiring timely removal of illegal non-stormwater discharges from the town separated storm drain system. So that's basically what we've added into our ordinances for all the changes to the ordinances. If uh, I don't know if Dave has anything else to add. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so this, these changes that we've been working on over the last six months with Christy, uh, Christy Rabaska, uh, we finally um, got it all together and we did a public hearing on it. Uh, we advertised it and um, closed the public hearing with no feedback. So basically this is just going to amend part of our land use ordinance. And this is something that our community has to do because we border, um, you know, the Salmon Falls River, and so does South Berwick, so does Elliott, so does Kittery. So they have to do it. This is all um, pretty much what she did was, uh, what we did was uh, just cut and pasted from the other communities. And it all worked out. We get, we received no feedback at the public hearing. So uh, hopefully, uh, if you guys do approve this, this will go on the ballot and we would vote on this in June. Yeah, so um, I, I definitely watched a lot of a lot of the meetings and you guys definitely went back and, and forth and put a lot of work with Christy on this. And then I, I think Dave hit the nail on the head there that this is pretty much all the MS4 communities are what changing our LUO will bring us in line with what that update is from the state and all the other communities um, that participate as well. So we're really just kind of falling in line with everybody else or as it would perceive the other towns are going to do this year or their next vote. So, and thank you guys for putting that work in because I know, again, watching that, I know you guys are back and forth a lot trying to get that verbiage uh, squared away to, to help our community as well. So um, this is just a presentation of the changes. We're not making any votes to put this, uh, I mean, do we need to make a vote or anything, Patty? Well, or is this just this is what, what you need to what you need to do is you need to vote on it, whether or not it fails or not. Uh, it's still going to end up on the ballot, but it's going to say the select board votes, uh, you know, five to nothing or four to one. That's that's yeah. what's going to say at the bottom. No, yeah. you're going to vote on all the warrant articles on the. Uh, I lost my thing. March fourteenth meeting. Yeah. Um, or March, yes, March 14th. So no, tonight you don't need to vote on this. Okay. So, all right, terrific. Um, yeah, I really appreciate the the presentation, guys. It sounds like it's been a long road. Um, and I appreciate you guys putting in the, the hard work to, to get it ready. Um, and uh, as Patty said, we'll, we'll be voting on this prob probably on the 14th to get it onto the ballot for June. So thank you. Okay. And if you have any questions, you can always email me at planning at berwickmain.org. <laughs> yep. We'll we'll come right down to the office. We'll find you. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I did the uh, 14th.
No, we, have, we have no unfinished business at this time. We have our town manager's report. I have a lot. Members of the library and I, we met with two representatives from Susan Collins' office to discuss earmark funding. This is the same funding where the town received about $6 million um, two fiscal years ago. Um, just wanna give kudos to the library. They commissioned and recently had a feasibility study completed. Um, it's very comprehensive. I'm uh, just starting to digest it myself, but um, it's, it's studies like that that really can be leveraged for future funding. So we're working through some of the comments. Um, I think Ralph will be pulling the application together, so wishing him the best, but uh, I am there for a support. And uh, I, I think I think that there's a really good case for the Library Association to get, the, get if not part of the funding, uh, it's just a significant chunk to the project. Uh, Main Water is close to completing the transition for customer service. Another letter will be sent out to our water customers. Uh, working with Patty and Lisa to come up with a system to ensure as smooth of a transition as possible. Um, in, the, in the intermediate, folks will be able to send in payments to Main Water by check, but also can make payments over the phone with a card. So more information will be coming out on that. Also, payments can be made at the Western Union in Rite Aid, which is a mile and a half from Town Hall. So if people prefer to make a payment in person, that's an option as well. <clears throat> so we got the results back for the pre-treatment process. We did pilot testing uh, in January. The results came back good, which means that the process has proven to work, which is an important milestone in the project to move forward. So engineering will continue um, and yeah, so the results are good and more progress on that. Um, we foreclosed on two properties. I forwarded the information of uh, those properties. Um, looking for a little guidance. Um, option one would be to reach out to the owners and work with them on making a payment, advising them they need to make a payment before April 1st. And if they don't make a payment by April 1st, they need to make a payment plus taxes in full, or should we start finalizing the foreclosure process now? Is there a preference? Have they been, have, have you been in contact with them at all? Lisa, do you want to step in for me, tag in? You're muted. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so what was the question again? Have we been in contact with the owners of these, of these properties that are now delinquent? Well, for three years, yes, we've been sending them letters. I have phone numbers for both of the people. On the final day, I called them both. One of them I spoke to on the phone. Um, she did not, she had called us twice and told us that she was going to bring payment. And then she did not show up on the last day and didn't really indicate that she was coming to in to pay. Um, I can call her again and, and ask her if she wants to uh, pay off the property. The other one, I left a message and it is in a trust. So I don't know why they didn't come forward and pay usually, but these are the people that pay at the last second every year. So I don't know what her, she hasn't been caught back in contact with me. So I really don't know what the situation is there, but I can certainly try again. I can call both of them and offer to have them pay it off. If you wanna quit claim it back to them. At this point, it, it, I mean, I was looking at the, the property documents. I mean, it's been three years of non-payment. Um, 
it's certainly sufficient enough to foreclose. So, um, but I do think, I mean, give them another month, send them another letter, let them know they have until April 1st to pay off the arrears. And if they don't, then we'll dispose of it as what the law allows us to. So, okay. I, you know, I mean, that's the, the best deal you're going to get, basically. I mean, it's been three years with no payments, so. Mm-hmm. And they both owe over $5,000 in back taxes. Right. Yeah. Okay, we will do. Anything else, James? I have more. Uh, gun range update. We had a great workshop, um, great turnout. And uh, one of the um, action items was to have Craig Gary of the Maine Inland Fishers, Fisheries and Wildlife go to the range and inspect it. And he's scheduled to do so. And Irish and I will be providing an update um, to the board and we can get the word out to the neighbors on what the results of that safety inspection is. And Irish is also planning on attending a uh, Sanford Springfield Fish and Game meeting as well. So we're staying in touch, we're following up and um, yeah, continuing the dialogue. James, when is you scheduled to go do the safety inspection? Irish. All right, I haven't tested my microphone. Can you all hear me? Sound okay. great. All right. Um, so the there was some back and forth with Zach, the president of the club, and Mr. Gary. And Mr. Gary had given them a few dates next week and a few dates the following week that he could do it. And they selected one next week and we're just waiting on his confirmation that he would be there. But it looks like it's going to be next week. And the meeting that they're having that I'm going to attend so that their members can can be aware of the concerns is actually Thursday. So that will all be taken care of. Hopefully by the end of next week, we'll have more information. Perfect. Thank you for following up. Irish, is that this Thursday you're attending or next Thursday? It's this Thursday, which is going to lead to me giving the planning board a memo for Alley Pond because uh, of the of the two, I think you guys have a better handle on what's going on than than the gun club necessarily, the gun club members necessarily do in regards to what the concerns are. So I tried cloning myself. It didn't work. <laughs> Any other questions about those issues? Thank you. Irish. Thank you. The last piece I have, um, we were approached about a potential gas station and moratorium. And I just wanna, you know, some of the research I've looked into it, a moratorium needs to be necessary. And it, in that statute it says, be, because the application of existing land use ordinances is an, a, inadequate, to prevent serious public harm from commercial development in the affected geographic area. So the moratorium language would, would say a gas station would cause serious public harm and that our land use ordinance is inadequate to prevent that harm. A moratorium would give the board, planning board time to write ordinances to prevent serious harm. I discussed with our director of planning, Lee J. Feldman, a series of changes to address concerns. And Mr. Feldman said our ordinance can already do what we would want to do. For example, in our ordinance already has this provision, section J, additional requirements attached to conditional uses and site plan review. Upon consideration of the factors listed above, the planning board may attach such conditions in addition to those required in this ordinance that it finds necessary to further the purpose of this ordinance. Violation of any of these conditions shall be violations of this ordinance. Such conditions may include specific specifications for type of vegetation and I'll emphasize increased setbacks. So that was one of the main concerns to put a moratorium in so we can increase, or increase the setback requirements. Planning board can impose uh, further setback uh, on top of that, each application which meets specific performance and standards, including preserving and enhancing the, the landscape, 
So landscape shall be preserved as natural state in so far as practical, practical by minimizing tree removal, disturbance of soil, retaining existing vegetation, after construction is can complete, I, you can, the point is there needs to be consideration for landscaping. The Hickory Lack access needs to be safe and that that project will not result in water or air pollution. So those are the minimum standards that um, an application needs to go by. And long story short, um, I do not believe in Lee J. Feldman would also agree, I'm speaking for him, that uh, a moratorium for this purpose would not meet the state statutory requirements of, of being necessary because an ordinance can already mitigate serious public harm by what's already in there. Oh, yeah, so no, I could, I could speak to this a little bit because I, I watched, again, I was watching that uh, that meeting. Um, and and yeah, I, I mean, I agree with some of the concerns that were, were brought up by by the residents and and those in town. Um, and, and I think of, of what Lee J and James are alluding to is that, um, so, so some of the concerns that were brought up are just what the long-term effect is of, of gas stations and and what that could be in a community. And and I know, you know, crime, what you talk about, the it, but crime, what you can throw that out because it's any public spot that you build can, can draw that. Um, and then the, the question from the planning board was to update the LUO, should they come to the select board to put a moratorium on it to to hold that off till the LUO could be updated. Um, you know, and I kind of mold this over too and, and looking at where our LUO is and, and what the planning board could do. I just think, yeah, I mean, the planning board can follow that LUO and, and put the conditions of, of use to that specification on, on the permit until that goes. I, I don't think that there's any need for the board to kind of intervene with the moratorium in there um, at, at this time, you know, at least. And I think that's what Lee J and James are kind of alluding to, too, where it's just, you know, we, we have the tools in town, you know, already kind of in place. If, if they want to put a, um, you know, like a, a standards in specifically for gas stations, I, I think that was what cut back, that concern could be. And I could see that in the long term. And I think even still, we could probably still put that in prior to that being built and might get built faster, but I think the conditions of use when it comes before the select, uh, before the planning board, they can definitely highlight that and, and keep that going where I don't think a, you know, moratorium needs to be put, put in place at this point. Uh, I have a question, I have two questions, but uh, James or Irish, whichever one knows best, um, the state already regulates gas stations. The DEP has regulations in terms of protecting water quality, air quality, I'm sure they have list of controls for gas stations in general, um, which would supersede our land use ordinance anyway. Uh, am I am I wrong about that? No, you're you're correct um, because of the the nature of the business. You know, gas station regulations do exist um, on the state level, federal level. Um, that's why they're developing all and all of these. Uh, items that were presented at the planning board meeting in regards to health issues. Those are all studies that were done and they're all part of mitigation purposes. So like that little weird rubber gasket that's on the end of the nozzle, if you're older like us, we never used to have those. It was just a little right into the tank thing. That's part of the vapor recovery. Um, so a lot of these, a lot of these things are already being addressed by by the higher authorities, and we would have to defer to them. Um, state typically trumps local. Thank you. Um, my second question is, we don't actually have like a written, do we have anything that says somebody's actually building a gas station or wanting to build a gas station? We, we, have we have not received a permit for that to go before the planning board. So... At this point, as far as I know, James, if you know anything different, at this point, I have not seen anything in writing. Um, it's just been started with uh, rumors from neighbors, and then I did hear a little uh, confirmation from uh, so from Paul earlier that the owners that purchased the property were approaching him and just letting him know that that was something they were considering, but I don't see that any plans have been put in place. So at this point, it's it's mostly rumor conjecture planning 
at, at, at best. You know, we don't have anything. There's nothing to 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 firmly worry about yet. Any in any case, we don't have anything to to stop because nothing's in motion. My worry with a moratorium is that if we have one and somebody somewhere else decides they want to build a, a gas station in town and they come across the fact that we have a moratorium on it, then that's going to dissuade them from building it in town in a place where, you know, that it might be more appealing to the, the neighbors. Yes. But um, yeah, that, that'd be my concern with the moratorium is, I mean, we have two gas stations in town in, within the city limits, right? Or is it, is it, it does that the truck one count as one? I don't know. But um, yeah, I just, I, I wouldn't want to dissuade possible future investment by having a moratorium in place while the while we make the land use ordinance to deal with an issue that's not an issue that also the state already has code on it seems like a very circular situation to me um so i'm also not in favor of a moratorium at this time another just point was brought up and I, this is me dropping the ball is um the planning board has requested I've talked to Mike probably four or five times about scheduling a joint workshop. And I think it's time to schedule a select board, planning board, and vision board joint workshop. I'll throw a couple of dates out just to get something in pencil. Maybe Monday, March 6th, or Monday, March 13th, or possibly Thursday, March 23rd. And we can probably just kick that idea around and maybe get back through email this week and lock down a date. Um, just so we're on the same page, second and fourth Tuesdays select board, the third Tuesdays in Vision Berwick, first and third Thursdays planning board, the second Thursday is comprehensive plan. So Wednesdays aren't good for the select board. So it kind of just leaves Mondays and the fourth Thursday. I think I guess the yeah, and I'm I'm all for that too. Um, if we could go towards the end of the of, of the month, that'd be great for me. But obviously, what works for there's there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of people to get involved. So whatever works, the majority is is good. But um, I, I I agree. I think it's I think we were intending to do them quarterly at least, and it's been been almost a year. So <laughs> yeah, time flies when you're having fun. Um, yeah, um, we do definitely need to have them on a more regular basis. Quarterly is a, is my recollection as well. Um, if you, a Monday night toward the end of March would probably be best, I think, for everybody to just to get their all ducks in the row. But um, if you email us some dates, we'll we'll hammer it all out in the big email chain. So yeah, it's on me. We'll we'll get it scheduled. Sorry, Mike. So and you know, I'm done. I'm, that completes my report. Thank you much, James. Any questions for the town manager? Okay, uh, we have no select board communications. I'm not muted, am I? No. Um, and we have the approval of counts payable. All right, let me find that tab. All right. Uh, First, we have, oh my goodness. All right, we have number 60. Hold on, I got 60 right here. Payroll, pay, pay, payable warrant number 60 for February 28th, 2023, in the amount of $178,379.41. And we also have number. Where is it? There it is. Payroll warrant number 58 from February 21st, 2023, in the amount of $75,249.79. I make the motion that we pay our bills. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Mike? Ah, uh, yes. Linda? Yes. And I'm also a yes. All right. Okay, so um, 
we have new business, the cost recovery fee schedule. Just provide a brief overview of the changes. Um, first one is it's simple $5 increase for residential permits. After the fact um, is addressed, it increases it for folks. Um, I think a slap in the wrist is I mean, a little bit more than that sometimes, but it also has a provision in there to reduce the fee because mistakes do happen. Uh, the commercial is increased uh, $25 for the application plus an additional 25 cents per square foot. And a new fee is added for those who require more than one CO inspection. I think a lot of times people ask for a certificate of occupancy inspection and they're not ready. So it's just really a waste of Irish's time. And we want to encourage people to be ready when they ask for the inspection because it's Irish's time. Now, adding in a fee for plumbing permits, there are a lot of uh, permits that are processed throughout the year. <clears throat> Sign permit is now enumerated, and there's also an added demo fee. And um, I think, like we've done with other fees, I think it'd be okay if we made this effective April 1st and to get the word out. And um, I'll defer to Irish to add in what I missed. Hi, so I just want to, uh, first of all, apologize that I've got dogs in the background and phones in the background, but uh, basically the goal of my proposal here with these changes, uh, for one thing, what James said about having a little slap on the wrist for the stock work order um, is, is important. It's a good deterrent. You typically never have to catch somebody more than once doing things they're not supposed to. Um, but I wanted to change the fees a little bit to bring them more in line with what other municipalities have, because the goal is for my position and my office to be primarily funded by those people that are utilizing the services um, rather than have the whole burden taken over by the taxpayers. So the $10 fee for the municipality for the plumbing permits, for example, that's a large portion of what we do. It's not much of a cost that's added, but it does take a, a chunk off of what other people are, are trying to pay for with their taxes. It, it provides a lot more funding to the office position itself. Um, that was really just my goal is to, to bring my cost basically neutral for the citizens that aren't using the services. And um, these fees, uh, where do they come in line with um other communities in the area? Still lower, still lower than most others, but I didn't wanna jack them up, jack them up, um, because I really don't, you know, it might be something that I have to revisit in another year or two, depending on how much construction we do um, versus, you know, if the plans, and part of it, especially with the initial fee, adding that $5 on, um, you know, when I have to take the time to review these plans, as we end up with the state adopting newer policies, like for example, right now with commercial, we have to enforce the international um, mechanical code. So that's additional layer of review that needs to be done to these permits. So as things change, there might be further change needed to bring us kind of even more in line, but I didn't want to go as high because I don't, I don't want to stick or shock anybody either. So we're still keeping them low, just bringing them a, a little closer to in line with what other municipalities have done. Any further questions for James or Irish on this topic? No questions. I like the tier on the CO uh, inspections. I think, you know, the no charge for the first one, but then seeing that stuff, they keep bringing you out because they're not getting it right the first time or prior to then. Then it's then it's worked there, and, and I think that was some some good insight there, where where it kind of appeases everybody, you know, and and, and values what you're doing. So, no, mm -hmm. I I like it, and, and yeah, I'm looking at what's there. It's like you said, for somebody who's doing something, it's kind of a nominal, you know, it's not a big impact on on any project, but it it is something that helps alleviate the tax burden in town. So, no, I I, I like it, and, and and I think the residents can at least appreciate that it's still lower than than the general area too. 
That's what I was aiming for. <laughs> um, you need a motion to accept the cost recovery fees effective April 1st, right? Is that a, all right, so I'll make a motion to accept the changes to the cost recovery fees um, effective April 1st, 2023. Any further discussion? Mike? Ah, uh, yes. Linda? Yes. I'm also a yes. Thank you. No, thank you. You do you do a lot. <laughs> I try. <laughs> we appreciate it. Um, Community Resilience Partnership Resolution. So this is a program that um, funded and uh, supported by the, st the state of Maine. And the, the partnership is about being resilient to climate impacts, specifically one of the specific ways is impacts of severe weather, uh, the changing weather and the weather events we're seeing. For example, we've seen the past 15 years, we've seen two 100 year storms. Uh, the town has benefited from this initiative already. We've received the $1.4 million for a fall project through this, um, through this program. Um, so this resolution uh, helps the town become an official membership in this partnership. Uh, Elliot is a member. Uh, there's also, uh, we were part of a, a compact through SMPDC. They helped to host a workshop that was held on November 16th. And that workshop is on YouTube. And I uh, highly suggest checking that out. So the resolution, it includes seven items that were identified as priorities during that workshop. And the resolution states that the town of Berwick commits to the partnership, identifies the town manager as a primary contact for the partnership. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the resolution. Oh, one last thing is that um, after um, becoming a full member, we're, we're, available, we're eligible for further funding. And one of the projects I'd like to go after is to finally establish Great Falls Park. So part of that project, um, eligible funding includes parks, so. Great Falls Park, that's what's gonna be at the edge, right? Or is that what I'm... Or am I thinking something else? That's across from the um, rec center, House of Hope is building oh. directly across. So the falls from the dam and the town owns a 2.7 acre parcel that the past six or seven years, we've been visioning a riverfront park. So this resolution, um, does it actually change anything in town or just more, more or less make a, make a statement of our commitment to addressing climate issues. It's not an ordinance or anything like that. It's just a, just a planner flag statement and it's one of the check boxes we need to become a member of the partnership. Any further questions? Uh, hear a motion? Are we uh, I'll make a motion that we um, sign in support of the Community Resilient Partnership Resolution. Sorry, I was rereading through it. Ah, uh, yeah, I second. <laughs> uh, any further questions? Mike? Ah, uh, yes. Linda? Yes. I'm also a yes. So that, re that resolution is passed. Um, Memorial Field Playground bids. So the bids were delayed a day. So we're gonna open those tomorrow and we'll have the results for March 14th. Um, Mike and I were having a discussion. We weren't sure, like, the, are these the bids to install the playground equipment? Or are these the bids for the actual playground equipment and installation or? Both. Both? Oh, yeah. We were under the impression that um, the playground equipment was ordered last year. Nope. 
Oh. Okay. That's what I, I thought too. Yeah. And we thought it was uh, under the previous administration <laughs> had been uh, had been already ordered, but was delayed by months because of COVID backup and stuff like that. Now, part of the this is funded through the ARPA funds, which yep. I think we allocated. I have to go back, but maybe three or four months ago, and then we've been um, working on the RFP. But it got to a point where we wanted to wait for the new rec director Josh to help work on the RFP, get that down right. So that's kind of a I guess the backstory on that. Okay, so this, so the money for this has already been allocated from the upper funds. It's not going to be part of the current budget or the next budget. Correct. Um, and um, once we open bids tomorrow, um, how long until the project should be installed? I don't know off the top of my head, but I will have an update for you for the next meeting. I don't know what the lead time is off the top of my head. I just hopefully don't want, we don't have to wait another 18 months or anything like that, you know? Um, I think it's we. I think it's a matter of, I mean, several weeks. I, I don't think it's going to be a year and a half. <laughs> okay. Just, you know, we had some bad experiences over that COVID time. Still got some PTSD about it. I think the yeah. standard lead time, I mean, don't hold me to it. I think it's about 10 to 12 weeks is typically what I'm hearing for a lot of, a lot of equipment. All right, so we're gonna table this until next meeting. So I guess I, I move to table the discussion of Memorial Field bids until uh, March 14th. Second. And uh, Mike? Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah, 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 there we go. Linda? <laughs> I muted, I muted, yeah. muted. I, yeah. yes. And I'm also, yes, yeah. so that is tabled for now. Uh, the dedication for the 2022-2023 town report. Oh gosh, sorry. Um, yep, just looking for suggestions from the board. You can email them to me. Um, Mid March, if you can, would be great. Okay, we will come up with some names and email them over. Great, thank you. Oh well, I mean, there have to be names to be other things too. Yes, we will get on that. Um, that is the end of uh, new business. Um, any no quick claim deeds, no abatements. Um, before we get to second public comment, did um, did Leb City Greeneries show up? Any representative from Leb City Greeneries? I did see him. Um... I thought I saw I thought yeah. I saw him, but it became iPhone. So I'm not sure if that was a disconnect. Are you there? Hello, I'm here. Sorry, I'm having trouble figuring this thing out. It's okay. Um, all right, so we are going to revisit the public hearing for the adult use cultivation facility at 11 Pond Road, Leb City Greeneries. Can I just uh, pop in real quick and let you guys know that the dye test has been done? Uh, obviously was done two weeks ago and there has been absolutely no dye that has been seen expressed outside of the system so even though I know that that was not necessarily part of the licensing thing I think everybody would feel better knowing that we do thank you very much for letting us know um so yes yeah, so as ha has already been discussed the two uh remaining deficiencies were the uh carbon filtration system being purchased and the security gate being installed. Uh, could you give us an update on those two items, please? Uh, yeah, I have a receipt here for um, three Dora Breeze light carbon filters, 14 inch by 50 inch, 3,800 CFMs, and then also 14 inch hand fan, max fan, 240 volts. 330, 40, uh, 38 CFM, and then also uh, inline four inch duct fan, 165 CFM, double uh, A carbon filter, four inch by 14 inch, 215 CFM, 
DuraBreeze light carbon filter, six inch by 24 inch, 550 CFM, mixed flow pro six inch inline fan, 395 CFM DuraBreeze. And I'll explain that with the, so the carbon filters and the 14 inch fans are used to actually scrub the rooms. And then the smaller fans and the smaller filters are for uh, fans that will exhaust air outside, creating a negative uh, air pressure system in all of the, uh, the cultivation spaces. And then also the, uh, the posts have been set on uh, Monday for the gate and they are planning to finish by the end of the week, weather permitting. And I believe those are the two uh, items up for discussion. Uh, okay. Um, uh, so do we feel comfortable approving this license without the gate fully installed, only partially? Yeah, I, I would I would make a motion to approve the license for the adult use cultivation facility, 11 Pond Road, just on the contingency that the gate's installed before he starts operation. Sorry, I second that motion. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I also agree with that statement. So, uh, any further discussion? Uh, Mike? Uh, yes. Linda? Yes. I'm also a yes. So, uh, as long as uh, do me a favor and make sure you email those receipts over to uh, Irish so we can have uh, documentation of it and have the make sure that the gate is installed and uh operation can resume can start after that okay great and i know i still have a uh a state uh licensing process to go through before i'm allowed to do anything down there anyway but i will uh i'll keep iris in the loop as soon as the uh the gate is installed so she can come check it out and i will email her the uh the receipt that i have for all the carbon filter stuff Perfect. Thank you for your uh, compliance. <laughs> Excellent. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, all right. So second public comment. All right. We don't have an executive session, um, um, but we do have the budget review. So at this time, I, we're, not, are we, we're going to recess or what are we doing? We're just continue pushing right through. No, just adjourn the meeting and then you can start the budget hearing. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Any other business not agenda items? Uh, I will just say that the uh, town crews have been busy the past couple of days and will be busy for a few more days more. And they're doing a great job keeping the road safe. And um, yeah, stay safe, stay warm. I would like to move to adjourn. Second. Uh, all right, Mike. Yes. Linda. Yes. Uh, I'm also a yes. Good night to the public. All right. So now we are going to take a short break and go into budget review. Hey, Dennis. You out there? In Zoom land. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the first department that I have on the list here is the fire department. Good evening, I'm here. Now let's Chief. get all these budgets open again. Da, 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 da. It's so much harder through email. Yeah. I'm so glad I brought my binder home. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, going back and forth with everything else through the meeting was I'm like, wait.
All right. Um, so please begin. Whoever's starting first, James or or the chief? Yeah, we can just go over the budget. It's pretty um, flat compared to the last year. Um, the captains, uh, our union. Hey, guys. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. Finally made it. What are we doing? <laughs> budget. Just in time. We just started budgets. Oh, geez. It could have been another half hour later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, what budget are we starting with? Fire? Fire. Fire. Fab seven. Fire. All right. Looks like the only increase is um, memberships. Chief Plant, did you want to go over what the increase for memberships is? Sure, the membership was, uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we got you, Chief. Okay, the membership, uh, if you recall, uh, a couple of months ago, I had an issue with our management reporting system uh, that we're presently using. Uh, they were gonna go up to $11,000 a year. <laughs> We had done some research on trying to find a, another management company, records company, and we found one that was cheaper. It was $9,900 a year. So we've kind of switched over to that, and I had to make that move before the end of the budget. So that increase uh, is for that purpose. That's why it's up so high. So that will kind of backfill the end of this fiscal year and then go into covering right. at the end of this fiscal year and then cover the so about 10 grand for next year then Correct. Is what, the initial okay. program was like thirty three hundred dollars okay and that's that's the heart of the program is that records management system it, it controls everything that we do i think everything else is pretty straightforward um there's a $5,000 increase for building maintenance. You want to cover that too, Chief Plant? Yeah, the building maintenance, uh, last year we never budgeted for land, uh, I'm sorry, uh, lawn, lawn care, which is, you know, big building. Um, James helped us out trying to get some stuff done throughout the year, but felt we probably ought to at least put some money in there so that we can maintain it, or at least try to maintain it through our own means. Uh, instead of, um, yeah, I know highways available, they do, do a good job, but there's still some land care that needs to be done by a professional. So that's what that $5,000 was or is. Are there any more questions for the operating budget? For yeah, time? I have a question. So Chief, I noticed that there's no increase on on the training. Are you, my understanding was that we're still, you're looking for someone, a, another full-time person? Um, we had applied uh, with your approval last year for two grants. One was for personal protective equipment. And yep. the other one was a safer grant. Neither one of those did we obtain last year. Okay. All right. I, I, I have already submitted um, again this year for both those. Um, the SAFER grant needs to be in by next week, which we're planning on being able to do. We went back and reviewed last year's grants as to trying to find out what we might have done wrong. We found some things that we corrected, and if it's okay with the board, I'd like to try to submit again. Yeah, absolutely. I just, um, do you think that the training, the training line is good? If you if you potentially bring somebody in, does the grant cover their training? Uh, the grant that I've applied for will not cover the training, but anybody that we hire will have the basic training already in place. Okay. Um, you know the the wages that we're looking at should allow us to do that. Uh, the way things are going right now, I I have one full time position and I have two per diem positions. You gave me the second one last year. 99% of the time that first per diem position I've been able to fill. 75% of the time, the second position uh, I haven't been able to fill, but I've just put on two new per diems. I've also put on four new recruits from town. 
uh, that have no experience or in the process of going through training right now as we speak. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully that will add to our, our force here shortly down the road uh, within the next three or four months. Per diem, um, the wages, I mean, our average wage right now for an on-call firefighter is right around $22 an hour. And that's not bad. You know, we've come up a long ways in the last 10 years with wages. Is it enough? Uh, probably not. Time we get done and go through this coming year, who knows what's going to happen. But I think reasonably the, the wages that we are paying are, are, are in line with what's out there right now. Okay. And with those four new recruits, do you think the amount that you have scheduled... Uh, Budgeted for training is, is sufficient? Yeah, if you look at my training budget right now, we've had several people go through um, a firefighter one, firefighter two. In fact, a couple of those people were able to get on this. Uh, uh, James informed me about it, but it was a job, like they pay for different jobs and stuff. Yeah. We were able to get a couple of people involved with that. I may have a couple more getting involved with that because they want to get their EMTs here shortly. I think the training right now at that is, is fine, you know. Okay. That can change, but <laughs> right now I think it's fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah. With the worker compact right now, we get 50% covered up to, I think it's 2,000 per employee or 1,800 per employee. Yeah, I didn't remember what it was. Sorry about that. And the last piece, uh, cover is the capital request um, for saving some funds for aerial replacement, which it's a 1998 and will probably be over a million dollars. And I believe there's five or six years left on the useful life. Uh, well, the vehicle itself is a 97. I tried to figure out today how much money the town has already spent on it, but I'm going to say it's probably in the neighborhood of 250,000. Uh, for major repairs. The vehicle expected life was probably five years ago. I would suspect if we're lucky, the town will be able to get at least another five years out of it. I could be wrong. I can't tell mechanically if there's anything major wrong with it, uh, but the day will come uh, that the town will have to consider their options, I guess, at that point in time. But um, all our equipment, most of our equipment is in really good shape. It's maintained on a yearly basis. Um, I got good driver operators, thank God. And uh, hopefully we're doing what the town has uh, requested and wants. Any other questions for the chief? Uh, all right. I think that's all we need from you right now. Um, and uh, yeah, I just... think you've been doing a great job, you know, <laughs> um, very few complaints about the fire department, um, you know, in terms of what you guys do on a daily basis and um, keeping the town safe. So, well, thank you. Can I, can I just bring up the emergency management the fund for a minute? Um, not, not that we have to discuss it right now, but when the board gets into there, I would, I would recommend highly that the board look at the funding that's in there right now and put some additional funding in there. Uh, in the near future, we're going to have to, as a town, uh, come up with some ways to provide sheltering equipment that we have very little of right now. Uh, and in the process, also looking at trying to find some grants out there that we can apply for. But in most times you get grants, there's always a cost share involved. So there needs to be some money someplace. And I would suspect that the emergency management fund would be a place that uh, you may want to consider and putting a few extra bucks in that account, just in case. Okay, that's all I got. Thank you. How much are you thinking as a figure? Just well, if you look, yeah, it depends upon how big, how fast do we need to get? Um, yeah, I would think probably 
a couple, maybe 150 cots or something like that. You know, and you're figuring probably $150 a piece. Uh, you're going to need blankets, pillows. You know, maybe let's say 10 grand. I think there's four grand in uh, in there now. If you, it's just my recommendation: throw in 10. At least we can get the ball rolling. Or if you feel that we need to do this all at once, uh, probably around 20, we could go. We could we could get what we need to say. Okay, Dennis, tomorrow if we need to open up the shelter, we got 200 cots. We got what we need. We can do it. Um, county has a lot of stuff. The problem is that a lot of towns falling on county just like Broad does and uh, they're running out of equipment too so in the process of trying to plan ahead again that we should have done 10 years ago but we're doing now um, I would think that we would want to give some consideration in doing that while we're looking for the grant it, while we're speaking about the emergency management and uh, shelters and things I, I think that's something that we need to talk about is when we need to develop a policy of when we open an emergency shelter, you know, and a lot of times, you know, we have these very short cold periods and things and, and you know, people seem to get by, but, you know, if you, every time it seems it gets really cold now, there's a call for an emergency shelter to be open. And I think we need to determine when, what are the criteria that we're looking at? But when we open a shelter, Tom, we yeah. are. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Linda. Yeah, no, because there's definitely a difference, and I think there's some confusion out there. A shelter is a place where you need cots, and people are going to stay like overnight, correct? Because they cannot go back to their home. But the warming centers are are different than that. That's just a, a temporary couple hour place you go, charge your phone, get warm before you go back and deal with with your residents, and it's usually short term. Um, but I, I agree with Tom. I think that um, I know you had mentioned before that you brought someone on board that has some background in that. It would be good to kind of iron that out a little bit and, and have a, a, a plan or a policy in place. Uh, we are working on that as we speak. And I would suspect within the next two months, we will have something in front of the board for your review. But it, we've never That's really good. had a policy in place. And, and you're right. It needs to be one. There will be one being worked on. I've got a couple of people that have already gone to some training stuff. We've got a lot of information in. So within the next couple of months, hopefully, uh, you'll have something that you can look at and you know decide if that's what the town wants to do as far as when to open a shelter, when, when to open your warming center. You know, the other big part of that picture is that you really need to have a warming shelter where there's an emergency generator. And we've talked about this before. We have a $6 million fire station set in there. The issue is that you cannot run an emergency operation service like that and then have a, a, a shelter set up in the same area. Vehicles and people just doesn't mix. So the next best thing is what do, do we, can we do it in an emergency? Absolutely, we'll do whatever we gotta do. But the bottom line is the town hall functions and should function as a shelter but it can't because it doesn't have the emergency power set up. So I asked Jody a few months ago to get some prices together in order to um, propose putting a generator at the town hall. I don't know whether he has done that yet or whether anything came up in his budget process that would indicate that he got any estimates. James, do you know? We I have think it's budget. <laughs> Yeah, it's in the capital improvement. Okay, so it's being planned on. It's just a matter of whether or not the town can can uh, obtain the money to to do that. Thank you, Chief. Okay, next we have recreation. Thank so, you. in between. Um, last fiscal year and this fiscal year from the revenues we were at we were able to add a, a recreation programmer shannon she's done an incredible job um, so that's one of the, the increases you see in the full-time wages that is the recreational programmer and admin assistant um, increase in health insurance with two full-time employees taking the full 
believe it's the full health insurance. And then everything else is, is pretty flat um, in terms of um, summer camp. There are some programs that are moved around and I can let Josh take the reins on the thinking behind what programs they have cooking. Um, keeping the grounds maintenance funded, building maintenance, outside services, keep uh, Tom Irwin retained and their consulting services. So the overall impact to the taxpayer is offset by the revenues. So depending on what we do with wages, it's either anywhere between a four and a half to five and a half percent impact to the taxpayer. My only question is just on grounds maintenance. Um, <laughs> So we've been consistently at 26 and change uh, the past couple of years. And this year's not even done. So we're going to finish up around like probably, I'm going to guess 36, 40 by the time actually with baseball going in, probably a little over 40. Uh, where's that extra funding going for, or where's that coming from if we're only asking for 20 grand for next year too? Like, is that, is that being maintained from, from the user fees? And is that where that, so is 20 grand what's coming off of the town budget and the tax liability and the rest is coming out of the user fees. Is, is that why that's only 20 grand for the ask again? Because otherwise it just looks like we're constantly under forecasting what we're spending on, on maintenance. Yeah. Oh, that's a great question, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we have used some of the, the, some of the program fees and I know that we've had some upfront maintenance we've had to do for some capital intensive work that's needed to get done but in terms of the actual ground maintenance i think i'll put josh on the spot if he's, if he's <laughs> yeah yeah I didn't mean to it. okay I, yeah no and that, and that would make sense if that if that was the case i just you know and i'm totally okay with the, the spending I, I get it but then i'm like okay we we ask for it and we just keep going back for a lower number and i'm like we're gonna come in way way over that number this year and we're going right back to that number again. So I just didn't know if that was being offset somewhere or, or if that was something that just, yeah, it was, it was a cost. I, I think that because the project was so big <clears throat> with the time when the beginning of that and the feasibility, I think the thought process is, is we're not planning on spending that much this year because we've invested so much into it already that we okay. don't need to spend that much. Okay, perfect. And Josh, I have a question too. I know that you have summer camp listed separately. Does that include, because I notice up top when under part-time wages, you're at a negative. Um, does the part-time wa wages for the counselors, does that just get lumped in with summer camp? Or no, the, considered well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I believe the, uh, the summer camp expense is just for summer camp expenditures, field trips, transportation, it does not include the part-time staff and the reason the reason for the decrease is we had a part the part-time staff go full-time so that those wages went to i was about to ask is that shannon going full-time yes yes that's what i was about to say too is that okay. her moving out okay we're at um or actually hold on a second i was looking at I'll get back to you in a minute. So Josh, yeah, I know you only officially joined like what, six weeks ago? <laughs> um, so how do you, you know, how do you feel about this budget and the way it's, you know, built up? I've had a little bit of uh, time with James on it and we did do some tweaking. And I think that it lines up right in line with the the parks side of it and the continuation of that there and then the recreation um recreation seems to they seem to have their own entities that run 
the I'm, I guess I'm just talking youth sports. So there's not so much of an investment there uh, now that basketball is being taken over by their own program. Um, yeah, so a... I lost your audio there, Noah. Uh, yeah, they uh, the the sports have their own committees and their own revenue streams that they bring in. Um, you know, they do their own shirts and recruiting and all, all that right. stuff. Um, we did get requested from the Noble Lacrosse for a camp on the on March 11th. They want us to sponsor it. It's a free event. No no money exchanged anywhere, but um, they want to run it through the rec program for the insurance because they don't require the kids to do USA Lacrosse yet for just a clinic. Um, so, <clears throat> sorry to sidebar you on that one. That just happened this week. Um, but it was either not have the clinic or or run it through the town, which we won't cost us anything. No, that's um, that's. Great. But I think we're right. I think we're right in line with the continued project at uh, Memorial Field. There's a lot going on this summer. It's going to be fun. Going back to ground maintenance for a minute, um, the the biggest expense out of there this fiscal year was the tree maintenance at sixteen thousand five hundred dollars. I don't know if um, that was actually all budgeted for. James, was it? Uh, well, I, what do you mean by budgeted? Just in terms I mean, of I think, was that, an, uh, was that an unexpected expense, like more than what we had thought? I think it was probably an added project yeah i think it was added i don't think it added, was even mentioned for yeah, like added one time it's a one-time project to clear around the fence line yeah and project. then there's only and as far as the part-time the summer rec there's um there's always like only two weeks left in june that um will be paid summer rec and then we'll be into the new budget year so there won't be much more um wages as far as summer camp coming out of that part-time line yeah we typically do the training which we keep them around for a couple days for a couple hours we're start planning on starting on the 26th oh well then june 26th if that uh starting summer camp or starting the training the training will have to be the week before or that weekend yeah. depending on when school gets out we've got a lot of youth staff we're yeah. five snow days now, I believe. The other piece is requesting fifty thousand from for capital improvements. So we have a hundred thousand from ARPA for playgrounds. That's just the beginning. We recognize that's just the beginning. Um, also, I think one of the emerging priorities, I could see this funding go towards. Um, a, uh, I don't know what you call it, the concession building, whatever you call it, a feasibility study for that building. Uh, but it, it also just gives us flexibility to match funds or just way more needs than $50,000. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm on board for that. Like, I, think, I think most of us know that the more, the more you invest into a RAC program, the more it pays for itself in the long run. So yeah. Exactly. That's already true. We, you know, rec basically pays for itself. <laughs> I mean, really. Um, any further questions for Josh or about the rec budget? Um, I, I don't have anything about the rec budget, but I talk about the field. Um, I just want to let you know, Josh, that I was approached to um, with a. Uh, probably a future complaint or something about noise from the rec field is uh and particularly the noise from uh, the pickleball courts there's uh, people in the neighborhood have told me that it drives them crazy so just to give you the heads up that you know you can be looking for something along that line coming down the road thank you i am aware of that one okay <laughs> Not sure how we're going to address that one yet, but it's uh, it, on our radar. 
Yeah, I, I, when they when they talked to me about it, I said, "Well, uh, place to start is the rec director." So I threw it at you. So, well, <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. What I see is I'll we're going to have a whole there. community forum about the noise from a pickleball court. Is what we're going to have. I think the whole energy and noise with the completion of projects is going to go up tremendously, no matter what. And the pickleball will be drowned by the screams of children <laughs> screaming and playing basketball. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we I did tell them that uh, they're moving the batting cages over too, so they can. Yeah, <laughs> there won't be ding, there will be no dinging in, in harmoniously with the paddle ball clinking. <laughs> so, is, but yeah, is, is uh, I'm I think we'll be all be hearing about it, you know, before long. So just to give everybody a heads up. Thank you. I have a feeling that I know exactly who you're talking about, but, <laughs> but save that for another day. The next budget we are looking at is capital. Good night. No, Good sorry, night. Good Thanks, Josh. Yep. So we're looking at capital. James. So in terms of uh, capital, which would be coming from undesignated fund balance, um, what we talked about with cheap plant, the area replacement, and just the typical replacement of his equipment. So that's fire. The CAX MDOT grant, we need 75,000 this year to be ready to match a $1.5 million grant. And then there'll be another 20,000 left over. There is a ton of funding out there and just kind of rebuilds our bank back up to start saving again for the next grant. Uh, with police, we've talked about the signs the 61,000 funds two signs. It's They're both message signs and they are radar. They show you your speed and they track it on the back end for reports. The vehicle replacement pays for the first payment of the lease program. Building improvement is dealing with asbestos at the police station. Um, and public works. Putting fifty thousand dollars towards basically be another um, more than just a feasibility study, but actually working towards engineering and getting through planning board of a public works expansion. Six hundred fifty thousand to combine with one hundred fifty thousand dollars for a total of eight hundred thousand for road funding. A generator at public works to run their uh, base, which is important, and. Uh, salt spreader and jody came back said a crack filling machine we need another person he's not ready for it um so he forwarded a shoulder mach machine which as we get down and look at how much we'd be tapping into and doesn't fund balance we may want to push this one out a year for consideration at least um as we mentioned uh memorial field improvements fifty thousand is proposed and then a transfer station, I think there's 11 buildings at the tr transfer station. Paint those buildings and then put some money away for reserve for those buildings. In a town hall, we need an electrical upgrade and the cost for a generator, we have an estimate of 150,000. So that would total to 1,282,060 at an estimated 21 million and a half million dollar budget. We have an estimated 1.5 spendable funding and not designated fund balance. Just to give you an idea of, of numbers and what we're looking at. James, that generated for the town hall, is that an estimate that you got from Jody or is, are you just allocating a set amount that you think it's gonna be enough? I need to go back and see, I, I will go back and refine that number. This was a number that we were talked about um, when the town hall went out of power about a month ago. And we did talk with an electrician and so we don't have the actual quote on the generator. Jody yeah. might have Jody might actually have it already. I just I need to double check. The speed signs, do they are these ones that display the speed or just record the speed for record? Both.
sort of display. It, I think there's one that I'm not sure how it displays messages and speed, but I, it has both capabilities. The um, so Jody said he needed another person before he could get the uh, the filling machine. Um, is is that like just another another employee to handle it? Is that what he's talking about? In terms of handling the machine and then doing flagging. Any further questions about capital for James? James, did we did we consider? I know we just talked about rec, which has made me think about it. But somewhere in the rec, in the whole spec, are we looking at replacing that building and putting up a usable one? I think part of that funding will go towards a feasibility study. So starting the need, bathrooms, a floor plan. So that would be the first step along probably a three-step process of a concept plan, engineer, get it through planning board. Obviously through the, through the feasibility study. How much does a study cost? What's that? How much does a study cost to tell us whether we need to take that building down or not? I think we, well, I would, I guess, assume that, I would presume that the building is coming down. I, I think the, 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 in the study we already have, they, they already said that the building is, is at this point, it's too expensive to fix that. Um, I believe the two major malfunctions were is there's obviously a, a rodent problem. And there was also, I believe, a, a flooding problem where like water was coming through the, the foundation or something like that. And that it was, um, and that the, the, basically it was going to cost more to fix it than it would to tear it down and replace it. So I, I believe that's what the study said already in, in my memory. I believe that's what was presented. Right. That's why I'm wondering, why are we doing another study? Why aren't we moving to engineering and a plan? I think it's worth, it'd be worth, I think the feasibility study helps direct the engineer on a plan. And how much does that feasibility study cost? I can get some quotes and maybe just start, see what starting with an engineer would cost. Um, look into even who does that type of thing for recreational facilities. Josh and I can look into that. Yeah, I, I tend to agree that, uh, you know, we don't need a feasibility study. We need a engineering firm to come in there and do a site plan for us to locate a building and start the preliminaries. So, you know, going right, right to engineering might be the best thing to do. It, and as far as the existing building is, uh, yeah, anything we do, it, it can't be utilizing that building for uh, our future use. And it needs to have storage, lots and lots of storage. I mean, I'm all for, for a building that has storage that can be used and even putting the bathroom in there. I just, I think we all agree and it's been reported in other previous reports that we've already paid for that, I mean, you're not gonna repair that building. So, I agree with Tom. Let's move it to an engineering, you know, study or analysis and see and go from there instead of repeating another feasibility study. We've been working with Sebago Technics a little bit on Memorial Field. So I think they they have a landscape architect and they have all kinds of engineers that can help get that started. Depending on what it will cost to do it, it might have to go back out to bid. <clears throat> Anything else about capital? Well, I just want to bring up what uh, you know, Linda had talked about before with us about um, 
in the roads budget is using more, um, putting more of the money from the budget and then less from the um, undesignated fund. Is, uh, you know, we talked about it the other day and you know, it, it, as she said, it, it makes sense that we don't become dependent on a funding source that might not be there. And I, I think that the townspeople would you know, be, be happy. Well, I wouldn't say happy, but would agree that um, paying for more for better roads is something that they'll go for. <clears throat> you know, maybe it, instead of you know just taking it out of the the um, you no know, going going with taking more money and putting it into the budget and out of the uh, capital and um, the undesignated fund is we could look at things that we could that are in the budget now that we could purchase at one time using undesignated funds that way by putting more of the road budget in it won't affect the tax rate as much. Right. Yeah, and I agree. It's it's definitely cheaper long term to maintain them and do them right than it is to just keep going back and throwing money at the patch it. I mean, how many roads have we, have we fixed in the last few years that already need to be done over again because we're not doing it right? Well, I agree in the sense that the roads are a continuous yearly expense that we should be we should always be updating roads. We have plenty of miles of roads to update. There's never going to be a year where we could say all oh, the roads are perfect. Um, so it, if it's going to be a continuous expense, then it shouldn't be under the capital and sense that we're taking out of the undesignated fund. It should be a regular budgeted item so that it, you know, it reflects that it's a yearly expenditure, not a right. sudden new expenditure like the road signs or the generator, which are one-time major expenditures. Agreed. The thing Lisa and I have been talking about is um, we need to change a, one of our policies that allows us to use undesignated fund balance to offset the taxes. So we can put in the, and I, I actually agree, and Lisa and I actually talked about that. That's where it should go. But on the other end, we still need to offset the tax levy with undesignated fund balance, but at least it'll be in the right place until we can increase our revenues enough where it offsets our expenses, we can get you know, further away from LB1. That makes sense. What kind of a policy change are you, are you proposing? I think it's one sentence or one word that, and I think it's our, I don't know if it's a control policy or it's one of our finance policies that said, it basically says, the only thing we can use undesignated fund balance for is capital, but then we we put in a second bullet that allow offset the taxes to lower our levy limit. I think that's what the, what the change would need to be. So currently it says that, so how are we using it? How are we using it now for roads if roads are a continuous? Roads are a capital item. Right. But they're a continuous capital. I mean, they're they're not a one-time thing. It's it's going to be an every year occurrence. It says that undesignated fund balance um, re is used to used for capital. So you you're that. you're classifying roads as capital improvement. Yes, they are. Let me just see if I can find it really quick. I think, yeah, it's historically, we've, we've called it capital, but I think it belongs in operating. Go ahead and I'll, I'll come back to this. Okay, um, next yeah. is, yeah. is uh, I, guess, I guess what we need to decide is if we're going to you know, split the roads, 
between the budget and the undesignated funds is uh, what how we're going to go with that. You know, is uh, what the breakdown is. I don't have a formula, so anybody has a good idea, jump in. Was it 60-40? Is that the 60-40 for this year? I think that I get confused about what, what was in there and then what, what I propose. I mean, I was pretty uh I, I was pretty out there. I, I, I was looking for a 50-50 split this year, but I think that might be a little um too much for the first year, but I think we should be moving towards that and then beyond every year. Or at I least what I had proposed was a 75 25 split. So 75 undesignated 20. <clears throat> I, I just, yeah, I, I mean, that's not much different from last year. And I, I just think we should move forward a little bit more. I mean, I think it also depends on what, if again, if we can change that rule that moves that undesignated fund to lower the tax levy, then, because either way, it's coming out of taxes right now as we speak, you know, it's just, how are we appropriating it, right. you know? And I, and I think that's, whereas if we budget for it, it saves us more in the long run. Um, but yeah, and then obviously we don't want to handcuff ourselves where we can't use the undesignated fund, but if we can do it that way, I think that's a great, great change i just we'd have to see what that looks like yeah i mean what about i know what you said 75 25 um james what did we do last year what was the breakout was it 80 20 80 20 i think it was 75 i think it was 10 percent. yeah i thought it was 10 percent yeah. was it always all undesignated fund prior to yeah that's right. That's right. It was we, the past we had the mini meltdown about it last year. That's right. right. <laughs> that we weren't planning for at all. How do people feel? And again, I'm, I'm just engaging in the conversation is I think we should go further. Maybe not to the 50 for I get that. That's huge. Um, but what what do the numbers look like for like 65, 35? Oh, let me pull it back up, too, because I, rem I, I remember doing the math last week. I just. Well, the other issue was that we were planning on spending more on roads this year as well. Right. Correct. So, um, yeah. Nice we even. We were about 800,000 on the roads. Last year, I think we were at like, what, 650, 600? 700, I think it was. 700. That's right. That's right. It was bumping up 100 grand. Okay. Yeah. So nice even numbers. 300,000. For eight hundred thousand is thirty seven and a half percent. And I was saying two hundred thousand paid for by the town and the rest by the undesignated fund. That was my suggestion. Yeah, because if you did twenty five, that's two hundred grand, but yeah, twenty five percent was two hundred grand by the town. Right. Yeah, 200 grand is 25, 300 is 37 and a half. Mm -hmm. 31, three is 250. Does anybody have any strong opinions that they want to put out there? Because I'm not feeling very strongly about any particular numbers as long as we have a consensus. Well, I said 65, 35. You said 75. We could split the difference and say, let's go to a 70, 30 split this year. At that point, you want to just make it to 31 and a half and do it 250, 450. Yeah, that way it breaks out even. <laughs> but at least yeah. the dollar amount's even. 
Yeah. And, and, and again, at the end of the day, that's, you know, it still comes out of what raising taxes. Anyway, I think it's just where we're yeah. planning for it, doing it this way. Right. Right. And I think that from the town's perspective, the taxpayers, it's, it's easier for us to, not that we need to defend it, but just to back up that we are budgeting for the maintenance of the town roads. Um, and then when we have appropriate money, then we purchase capital items. But we are, the, the roads are a priority for us and we've made it that by putting it in the budget. You say two, so 250? Yeah, 250 grand is, I, I think it's 31.2%, 31.3%. Then it kind of splits that difference of where, where we were going with the number. We're going to go on to public agencies. Yes, I do. <laughs> Second year. So for public agencies, pretty much traditionally, what we've funded is Memorial Day Parade. Every other year is the Legion Citizen of the Year dinner the Shipyard Association, the Coast Bus. And we have a handful of other requests. I'm just not familiar with any methodology or any way we wade through the request and how we pick who we fund and who we don't fund. So I don't have a recommendation. I apologize for that. I just, I just, don't, I just don't know. We probably need to figure out something as the board probably needs to figure out something. Well, I, I'll, I'll speak to the Coast and the Shipyard Association. Uh, Coast Bus Service, is a, uh, I'm, by title, I'm on the board of directors, but I haven't attended one of their meetings in a while. Um, but the money that Berwick gives to Coast is they use that to leverage federal funds. And I think the, this year, the money that they uh, you know would get from us would go towards leveraging I think around forty thousand dollars in federal funds um, is you no know, the the coast bus you no know, uh, public transportation they they really provide a service to people the low income people especially um, it's also important when we're looking at grants and things because we can you know put down that we're part of a interstate bus line which is you know one of the only the few in the area is the only one in Southern Maine and New Hampshire actually. So that's where, you know, the their costs go up is, you know, they, they, they raise their ask this year a little bit. So is, um, I, I think it's a good deal. The Shipyard Association, I think we've been paying that for 40 years or something like that. Um, yeah. Is that, that, that has gone, the, the Shipyard Association is, promotes the shipyard, but is the the thing with Berwick is Berwick has historically been one of the larger providers of labor to the shipyard. I think we're either the second or third highest number of people from town working at the shipyard. So uh, you know the the Berwick Berwick's you know financial well being is tied to the shipyard's well being. So anything that we can uh, do to promote that, I think, is a good idea. Also, I agree. The only uh, question that I had with this is: is there a is there a formula? And maybe there isn't. That's fine. Um, that we look at these public agencies, and you said there was other agencies. Um, can we see who else is? Who else is requested? I know these four are probably the ones who, and then I noticed the American Legion with, you know, was minus. Um, 
their request this year, but can we just see who else was at was out was asking? Yeah, I can send out the request. Um, yeah, that was also my question: is is who is making these requests that we aren't approving? But we'll we'll take a look at everything. Right. I found the fund balance policy. So that it states um, the one the one paragraph that talks about this particular um, about capital needs says amounts in excess of the target, which is the 12.5%. Um, amounts in excess of the target can be used to fund the capital needs of the community as deemed appropriate by the Board of Selectmen and voted upon at town meeting. So it's always been used to offset the capital purchases, capital needs. Is that a policy that we can um, that we can rewrite and vote upon as a board, or is that a policy that needs to be changed with a town vote? I I think it's a board policy. I think so, yeah. The board policy. Yes, and it was approved by the Board of Selectmen, um, Selectmen on April 1st, 2014. If you guys want to write a new policy that includes but uh, you know, uh, making up for the um, the tax rate, then we can adjust that and you know, and distribute the funds that you know the way we want to, to make sure that roads are properly funded and not just from the undesignated fund. Right. So if you guys, yeah. Jane, yeah. James, just James get something policy. from legal and just have them bring it to us for the next meeting. It doesn't even have to be. I mean, for the next meeting, but you know, or, or summer down. Yeah, summer down the line. <laughs> <laughs> there's no rush don't 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 pay overtime for it but you know just you know if you guys want to work on it and work through it and get it to us we can make a change sometime in the future excellent we will work on that probably gonna have it for the next meeting i have the agency request right here if you want to go through some i can summarize it and go through real quick sure yeah, sure Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so the first request is for York County Shelter Program. They're requesting $1,500. Fundraising activities, uh, they, that's what included in their packet. So uh, in their packet, they include um, five residents from Berwick were served. They serve 159 food boxes. So that's, that's the entirety of that's that that's that request. Um, request two life flight. Um, and does everyone know what life flight is? Generally, mm -hmm. their so their request is one thousand nine hundred and eighty eight, based off of a per capita, or they've requested any amount that is appropriate within our budget. So. And someone's having a medical emergency, that's the helicopter that comes in, gets them to where they need to go, saves lives. Cornerstone VNA, home health hospice, they've requested 6,360, and that's based off of uh, per capita rate. So as a nonprofit, the town's financial support would help us provide free care to uninsured residents of Berwick. And then this one's a shipyard, this one's coast. And I believe that that's, that completes it. So the ones that I just included what we've done in the past and the additional would be the shelter 
for 1500 life flight for 1988 or what we can afford you know, or and and the third one is cornerstone for 6360 does your county shelter program off ask every year or is that new? I don't remember that one. <clears throat> I don't recall as well. The, it, I'm it, pretty it, sure they request every year because every other town I've been in worked for gets the same request. A lot of towns are getting away from funding those because of it's it's tough because it's times. Times. or no to another than it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. My only question about the about life flight. Don't we don't don't they just cover every area or, or do we, you you pay for access to that program? I'm not sure. And yeah, they cover go ahead, Linda. Uh, don't they fill insurance? It's kind of like an ambulance. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just picturing the situation in which someone needs to get flown down to Boston or something like that. I mean, they're going to get, let's say they have an emergency in their front yard. They get picked up by the ambulance. They're brought to Wentworth Douglas or whatever, and they're picked up from there and flown down to Boston or something. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm not sure I understand. Like, I'm, I'm wondering if they're trying to offset the cost of those that are not, those that don't have insurance. I mean, that's probable. I imagine that even with insurance, the cost is probably like $50,000 a flight or something. Yeah. Some, yeah. Something absurd like that. But um, yeah, I'm just not sure I understand that request. They're just. Well, you have to understand too that Life Flight is a for profit entity. Yeah. Whereas the York County Shelter and the Cornerstone Visiting Nurses are not, you know, for profit corporations. So. Is, you know, it's like the coast and the seacoast association those are all non-profits and yeah uh, but i mean like i i understand the benefit we get from the coast and mm -hmm. you know it's just like i don't yeah. understand we give life flight yeah know, well that's my point is they're they're a for, for profit company you know is they're just looking you know they get paid obviously or they wouldn't be flying and uh, i saw that they were recently they were expanding so yeah um but no like i said it, it's typically uh we haven't we haven't given money to for profit companies in the past like that and that's that's what i was kind of wondering if there was a policy that we don't do nonprofits or if it's just been a decision of the board which makes it's sense. always just been a decision of the board you know in the past 9 years is you know we've had you know the, the ones that we typically have would be the shipyard association coast the veterans and um usually there's one other i can't remember off the top of my head so is um <clears throat> and yeah it's always just been you know at the discretion of the board i don't feel particularly strongly about any of those other requests to approve them so um the only the only one I quite I have a question about is the cornerstone VNA. Did they literally break it down to percentage of Berwick residents that utilize them? They the cost is based off of just our population. They said that cornerstone provided services to 100, 126 Berwick residents, but it doesn't say. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't believe it necessarily says that's 126 uninsured residents. It's just 126 residents received services from VNA. So Cornerstone VNA is not is isn't a nonprofit. It is a nonprofit. Okay, it is a nonprofit. Okay. Did, I'm sorry, I just can't remember. Did it say that they provide their services free of charge just to people that are insured or? As a nonprofit, the town's financial support would help us provide free care to uninsured residents of Berwick 
as well as access to a wide range of specialized services and support. Okay. The reason why I'm honing in on that is, again, I, I feel like we have a significant number of um, elderly residents, and I'm, and I'm just to be clear, I'm not justifying, you know, the whole amount. I'm just thinking that maybe we should be contributing something or should contribute something if they're provide if they are truly a nonprofit and they are providing free services to some of our senior citizens. I think that. That's not too much of an ask there. James, if you could, if you could just maybe reach out and get a little more information from them, like how much, you know, like a breakdown of the, what they're providing to the town, how much, you know, how many uninsured people they've actually been helping in the town versus how many insured people, you know, any anything like that. I mean, it might be something that we can look at, but. Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, I would, in, my, in my head, and, and it's not solidified in there in, in any way, shape, or form, they're asking for, you know, 6,300, and I was thinking of, you know, maybe 1,000, um, if if they truly are providing no cost <clears throat> to seniors in our, in our community, I, I don't think that's a far reach. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into it and get more information on the, the demographics and see if I can get more specific Berwick information. I don't I don't know what anyone else is thinking of, you know, as far as money or anything. I, I That was just my initial thought. As for the, the York County shelters, for $1,500, you can provide a lot more boxes for our residents. <laughs> Yeah, they actually do. I mean, especially during COVID, I can attest they're just down the road from where I work. And um, even when COVID hit and everybody locked up, they literally moved their services outside. So people would drive in. They weren't allowed to get out of their vehicle. They would have to um, either open the, open the back of their car or their back seat door or whatever. And people, you know, who were masked would put the boxes in, in their car. So they didn't, I know a lot of people during COVID closed up and services became scarce. Um, and they're one of the few that I know did not. They still provided services, provided food, tried to reach people to ensure they got it and received it. And a lot of people, um, you know, on the lower income, you know, economic span who lost their jobs or were laid off for periods of time ended up, their, their usage rating went way up during COVID. So, well, um, I'm sure no, the, yeah, the North yeah. Berwick uh, food pantry also had a similar increase. And in yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a thing. I, I mean, I mean, the YCSB, but they do phenomenal things. I just think from a Berwick spot, we're right. probably, I, I think yeah. they're more of a Sanford, Alfred, you know, they pull from Biddeford that spot. And, and again, they do phenomenal work up there. And you know, but yeah, like Noah said, there must be, don't we have some? Don't we have some local food shelters around here? And, yeah. and that's the and North, that's it. We yeah. have more. the North Berwick Food Shelter, uh, uh, Food Pantry. Um, they operate every Monday out of the um, Herd School up there. Okay. Um, yeah, they. I, uh, I I know I know a number of people that go there, and I've known a couple of people that go to Portsmouth as well for uh, food for food pantry stuff. So. Yeah, I mean. I think they do a great job, phenomenal job, but but Mike, I don't disagree with you. I think of where they pull from. I would be, you know, if there was a if there was a something a little bit closer on this list, I think I would advocate for it a little bit more. But but you are right. I think that their general population is coming from northern York County. James, I think that brings us to miscellaneous. Excellent. So uh, I know Envision Bar has been waiting a long time, so we can <laughs> write that down. Jeremy. Hi, thank you. Um, so I we had quite a few members on the call at the uh, front end uh, who were anxious to share sort of what they're up to and uh, and what we uh, what we're planning for 2024, but I think it's been a, a long call and a lot of folks get up 
uh, before the sun rises. So we've lost some folks, but before we get into um, specifics with Envision's um, other committees, I'd like to uh, hand off to Sharon, uh, who's really done a massive lift with um, Berwick for a Lifetime in the last uh, six months. It's really become probably one of the most vital um, projects happening in town uh, with incredible programming. And, uh, and she, uh, she has a uh, presentation she's put together. I don't know if there's a better time for this, but I think because of the timeline and the schedule, my impression is that this is sort of the last possible meeting to be putting in for budget stuff. Is that right? Uh, yeah, it's the it's it's the last planned one. If there's more stuff, we're gonna have a, another meeting in a in a week. But this is the uh, the last planned budget meeting. Okay. Sharon, you and I. Hi, everybody. Here? Yep. Um, I'm I'll, I'll make it quick. I thought I could either talk and tell you what's going on, or let you see for yourselves. And if uh, Terry's still here. <laughs> She's got everything lined up to um, to let it roll. Looks like she's still. What do you here. want to see first, there, Sharon? The video. Okay. The uh, meet and bleat. Okay. I we just needed to be sure. Yeah, we needed a way to really gain the town's attention, and the Envision Berwick folks came to our rescue with goats. Who doesn't love goats? And we gained some attention all around the state. So um, Terry's gonna get that going for us. Yeah, just a minute. Can everyone see it? No. Not yet. Now? Yep. Yeah, I got it, yep. Yep. Do we hear it? We can't hear it. Hear it? I'm sorry, you can't hear it? No. Huh. All right. That's kind of odd. Um, let me pull it to my other screen. Hold on. Oh, and just to, um, while Terry's doing this, the summer's worth, Berwick food pantry is where a lot of Berwick citizens go for food. And we send all our fresh vegetables there out of our garden. So thank, thank you, Sharon. I knew I, you know, I almost saw you on mute. I was like, I bet you Sharon knows who we use. In I, I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> that working? It's working. Okay. But it's not no noise. And Still so no, noise. no, no. Oh, shoot. All right. Hold on. It's second. okay. I don't want to take people's time up. Um, so Berwick for a Lifetime is a subcommittee of Envision Berwick. And what we are are a group of volunteers and concerned citizens that are coming together to help bring more services to Berwick's elders and um, people with mobility issues, with isolation issues, with um, social isolation. And um, during COVID, we saw a lot of people failing, uh, older people that would come in the library and we would call and check on them. And isolation and loneliness is as destructive to the human body as cigarette smoking for over like 20 years. And I, that I'm just paraphrasing and you can look it up, but it's quite devastating. And we saw problems before COVID. So you can imagine what happened during COVID. So our volunteers are doing um, food box pickups. We're going to Sanford, we're picking up their food boxes. These are heavy 32 pound boxes that these folks, even if they have a ride to go get them, you know, how are they going to lift this stuff into their house? Um, that is one program. We also are doing um, 
sand bucket brigade, we call it, and we're filling sand buckets and bringing it to folks' houses. We're helping to make sure they're not falling, slipping, um, things like that. I have so many ideas and want to get so much, um, so many things happening and our volunteers are fantastic and people want to help. So we've got the waves moving and, and we can ride it and we can get more people, more services that don't sound like they're a lot, but when it comes down to these individuals, that means a lot. So that's uh, Berwick for a lifetime. And I thank Jeremy and uh, Marie and Elise for all their great ideas and support. And of course the town manager and the select board and all of you guys and volunteers. So thank you. I'll stop talking, I'm so tired. <laughs> We're lucky to have you. And um, and I really think it's incredible the work you've, you've done and put in um, just on the, almost nothing. So. Um, I think this year we've started to look at uh, increasing, uh, having a, a, you know, Berwick for a lifetime is part of the Envision Berwick budget in a, a substantial way. It's still, I think, very reasonable. We're not looking for more funding than what we got last year for Envision. Um, our, our, the, the, you know, our, our, our budget will remain the same, but a larger, you know, percentage of it, almost uh, more than a quarter of it will go to Berwick for a lifetime. And I think that that's as it should be. Um, I will say quickly, uh, just uh, to fill out the rest of that, uh, those points, um, we have a bunch of other irons in the fire. I don't know if uh, Elise and Maria, you guys have like hung in there for a long time, but I think perhaps it's better to hold off because James, are we still touching on the, um, the um, uh, digital communication signage? And yeah, so maybe, you guys will, will touch on that in a moment. Um, some of the other things that that Envision Berwick, in addition to the stuff we do already do that you're, you're aware of, um, is is um, trying to get airborne again, is uh, uh, the historical society trying to figure out what we need to do to, to get it back in place. Um, and uh, I can't tell you the number, when, when I do talk to young families that are moving here, that's sort of one of the first things people ask about. So I feel like it's it's a critical piece. And uh, and there's a, a bit of a, a forensic effort underway to figure out how to get that that um, that going again. Uh, also, uh, I've been working in communication and uh, taking baby steps with uh, uh, Aaron, who had originally uh, put together the Berwick Art Association, trying to figure out how to do not, not necessarily the same thing, but a version of that um, or an art association within Berwick, uh, as well as what I think I've talked to you about most recently, which is coming up with a, a, a new um, uh, economic development committee out of Envision Berwick and trying to come up with more um, economic drivers that are what we perceive to be the right kind of economic drivers that will have um, a lasting positive impact on the town and aren't just um, cashing in. So in any way we can. Uh, with that in mind, I would like to uh, remind everybody that uh, we are at the very beginning stages of planning for this summer's Bring Your Lawn Chairs to Sullivan Square, our premier concert series. We have uh, now confirmation of the three most popular acts from last year will be returning. That's uh, Van Borscht, that um, that often plays uh, at, at our brewery. Uh, it's also um, uh, 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 Bitter Pill, also popular. At, at our brewery and uh, Dan Blakesley, all joining us for Bring Your Lawn Chairs to Sullivan Square, all great acts. We're working on putting together some more spectacular uh, uh, variety acts for this year. And um, with that, I'd like to share with you a quick, if this works, if not, I will bail on it very quickly, a quick minute and a half video. You guys will be the first to see uh, the trailer promotional video for this year's Bring Your Lawn Chairs to Sullivan Square that will be, um, our, our big uh, sales piece for raising funds. So with that, I am going to load it. It's gonna take a moment to load here. Um, yeah, amazing that any of you are still standing. I hope none of you have to be up early tomorrow. It's, these meetings don't usually go this long, right? Or you guys always do this till like midnight every, every week and we just don't realize? Nope, yes. 
but it's Caesar. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, here we go. Uh, make sure I have this turned up. If it doesn't work, like I said, just shout and I'll uh, I'll bail. So that's um, that's the nineteenth of August. We're uh, working with um, uh, Run for Fox Sake, which will start the day off, um, and then um, and we have some some more surprises. Uh, uh, Lindsay Howorth uh, is working on putting together a uh, potentially a small craft fair with local crafts as part of uh, Bring Your Lawn to Sullivan Square this year, uh, among other surprises that we're working on. So um, stay tuned. I'll keep you posted. Um, I think that's uh, did I did I cover most of it, James? Did I did I touch on everything I needed to? Yeah, for Vision Brook. Yeah, that, that's good. 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 Thanks. Many the DCBS. <laughs> so as we talked about, we have uh, we are uh, hoping and planning to to shift the focus of of our digital communication. And uh, signage and and branding uh, over to to out of Envision Berwick and uh, back to uh, a line item within um, the town's budget. Uh, and we've talked about that previously. And to touch on that uh, because today was kind of a momentous day. I think I'll I'll hand off to uh, Marie, who's managed to stay awake for this up until now. And so uh, take it away, Marie. It is somewhat amazing. I do go to bed at nine o'clock, so this is pushing it for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Berwick bi-monthly went out today and um, it was really well received. We had 360 subscribers um, at the beginning of the day when it went out. Of those 360, 230 opened it and then 30% of that clicked on or sorry, 20 something percent clicked on links within. So people were really exploring it. And by the time right before this meeting, um, we were at 422 subscribers for the Berwick bi-monthly. So I'm hoping just as we, you know, put the mid-month update will come out in a couple of weeks. And I think with each time we put something out, we'll get, you know, a hundred or so subscribers each time. And I'll keep pushing it on social media and I think it's just going to be a great way to connect. Um, it was really wonderful actually just bopping around town and touching base with the departments and kind of consolidating information. And um, I know more people will come out of the woodwork because they already did asking, can we put this in? Can we put this in? So I think it'll be a really great tool to communicate with folks. I should also mention for anybody who isn't super familiar with, with, the kind of statistics you get from from uh, uh, interactions with with folks on the internet, those are pretty significantly good numbers. I mean, it's it is very difficult to get people to read things. It's very difficult to get 
you know, they have to click through. It's, you know, subscribers are hard. Everybody's very used to just using the interface on Facebook and Instagram. And so capturing our own information is critical. And the fact that we're already, you know, first time out at such good numbers, I think is a rousing success. Great. I have a question. Um, now I saw a post about it on the Facebook page there and I followed it and looked at it online and stuff like that. Obviously I signed up for the next one, but. Okay. Um, do you have numbers on people who are, are, are looking at it through the website, but are not signing up for it? You know, just, you know, people that are actually still getting the information, but aren't signing up for it just because they have enough email garbage or whatever. James, can you see specific yep. page views? Yep. We have yeah. we have Google Analytics. I haven't pulled it yet, um, but I can definitely, you can definitely check that by monthly. Perfect. Cool. Let's talk about signage. Well, yeah, so we oh, are signage. excited to continue our work. We did a presentation. Well, first, I'm just really excited about getting lawn chairs going. Thank you for sharing that beautiful video that you worked so hard on, Jeremy. It just got me like all jazzed up at the end of our incredible. meeting. <laughs> um, so yeah, we are planning on um, continuing the work that we've already started in terms of the sign. Amelia, it's time for bed, honey. Good night. <laughs> just had to say good night to my daughter. Um, so our branding work, continuing the system with our next logo, which will be the Envision Berwick logo. Um, we're going to be working on another sign for the transfer station. We've already, we just finished um, doing graphics for some of our public works vehicles. So we're going to be continuing that system, um, applying those to plows. And I'm going to be looking at doing some updates to our town's website in fiscal year 2024 as well. We're due for a redesign there. So we're going to be doing some design consultation on that as well. Cool. Nice. Cool. Any questions from anybody for, for either uh, digital communications, branding, signage, or... I don't know if I asked if you guys had any questions. I just I just checked Google Analytics and the bi-monthly page is already the number one page for this week. So that's that's awesome. No questions. Just you know, huge, huge shout out to you guys and, and the work that you do. And it it definitely doesn't, you know. It's just the beginning, really, when you're you're seeing the value that it's giving back. And you guys have really worked really hard for I know at least the last 18 months to two years that I I've seen it and, and kind of off the hand and where it was and where it is now and, and, and huge, huge kudos to you guys. And, and thank you for all the work that you do. Cause it's, it's definitely a huge spot of the town. So. Yeah. I just want to read the same thing. That video is awesome. I can't wait to see, start seeing that go out there. And I think that, uh, I think the electronic newsletter is, is going to take off. It really is. I think it's a great way to communicate with people. And actually, Linda, can I ask you a quick question? Because this came up at the last presentation was I thought you had mentioned a community board um, at the Pine Hill Mobile Park, Mobile Home Park. And I, I kind of sketchily sure, circled it the other sure day. It's a community board. What I'm saying is when you pull into the when you pull into the drive, the there's two a mailbox units. The shelter yeah. units. I investigated both of those and there's nothing hung up in them. So I felt a little funny tacking the bi-monthly up there. Right. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't sure. I just knew okay. that it was covered. I just wanted, I people, just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something. No, no. And I know that people, they all I you see them walking there to go get their mail. It's their exercise yeah. and one. So to me, that sounds like a great place to post it. And I'll but, look into it because I can always like laminate it to protect it. It, it, it is it is a private property, so you might want to check with the owner. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I have a question, you know, about the website. You know, that's something that you know we've talked about for years now. Um, is what are we going to do as a town to make sure that that's you know updated as it should be? Is it sounds like now that it's mostly three or four different people. You know, putting things on it, and we really need a single coordinator for it. 
Yeah, I think part of this, so there's like a line item for strategy and planning. I think that that's going to be part of it is kind of getting all the like critical people, stakeholders together to figure out the best plan and do like a full audit of the site. And then like, not just the town website, but all the other sort of like the rec site and the library and to kind of think about all the different properties so that they're all working together as one cohesive um, system of sites as well. Um, and if there's, you know, better processes that we can put into place and having, you know, um, a more consistent kind of authoring experience or people that are doing maintenance and updates, um, you know, we're definitely open to kind of streamlining that as much as possible and helping kind of determine what those processes are. So I, I, th I think we need to do is, is find somebody, you know, designate somebody in the town, appoint somebody in the town that, you know, is in charge of making sure the updates are up. You know, I don't know um, <clears throat> who's that going to be or anything, but that seems to be one of the common complaints I hear from people that, you know, it's not updated. And as I said, that's because, you know, three or four different people from different entities within the town are, are trying to do that. And then there's no one person there. So that's something that we as a board need to look at. Yeah, I will say that I think in, in systems like this, part of what Elise is speaking to and one of the things we've noticed and we've talked about from the beginning is, is this sort of very siloed approach we've had in the town to everything from, from you know, police to library to, to rec to, I mean, everything's got its own Facebook pages, you know, to, have you guys gone on Facebook and just searched Berwick to see what there, there's, you know, when you, I post something, I'm just pulling up rando different groups to put stuff out in the world. And, and that's how it sort of is with the internet right now for Berwick as well. It's, it's a bunch of disconnected websites and to have something that is interconnected and a um, a strategy and a, a roadmap to how when new information comes out, where it lands, how we make it very accessible to people and who posts it. I think that's the next step. I, I totally agree. It's got to happen, but let's, let's figure out what that umbrella situation is so that we're plugging it in in the right places and we're building something that can last, you know, we're not taking a, a 55 ed toll and trying to make it work like uh you know like a modern it's it's just i think our website needs a lot of uh, oh, yes back end <laughs> improvements to make it work like that's what i hear all the time or <laughs> like in conjunction and functionally and and that's i think the next step is figuring out what that looks like so that because nobody none of the users are going to think about it it's just going to be a better cleaner smarter experience right. but it, it needs to happen now it's antiquated did that answer the question tom yeah, well I, i'm like i said I, I i'm bringing it out as a general thing know that know that we need to have a serious discussion with this and make sure that you know we figure this out it you know it i was in haverhill mass with uh terry and uh, ralph Morang. they did a presentation of their they have video, the, the film, the news desert in a small town and uh, the college students there, we talked afterwards and that was something that came up several times. You know, during our discussion was that, you know, we need to have somebody that is in charge that can direct this. As you said, it's a scattershot approach now. There's you no know, 10 websites out there, you know, five of them associated with the town, and they all have different information on them. Here's what I think might be might get at what, what you're 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 speaking to. Within the next within 2024, part of what this budget covers is determining what that looks like. Maybe much like Elise and I came to you guys with uh with the branding presentation we we should make a s series of recommendations for what these steps are based on we've already had you know one fairly thorough conversation with our hosting company about you know and we're up for a a, a total overhaul of the site right it's every four years so we're there it's time but now we need to step back and and in a in a big picture way analyze what what how this will what needs to happen and how we will do it 
And I think that that's sort of what you're asking for so that we can make recommendations about what, what the steps are moving forward. So it's a, um, you know, a roadmap. Does that sound right, Elise? Tom? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good. Want to watch the video again? <laughs> I like that last guy he threw in there on the bike. Isn't it? I thought the kid there with his face, that was that was great, wasn't it? He was painted on the side and he just looked in complete awe. Really sweet. I think that covers it. Is there any more for Vision Berwick or the DCBS <laughs> initiative? No, it was a great presentation. Cool. cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Can then pick up on the next conversation in 15 minutes. So I think the last thing we have is transfers. I'll just go quickly through the rest of miscellaneous. Um, Stormwater engineering is Christy Rabaska to help us keep compliance with the DEP permitting stuff that's coming down. We fund that, that's, that's every year, it's well worth it. Uh, she does a fantastic job keeping us in line and compliance. She helped the plenty work with the ordinance changes and um, and really it fights for us and it fights back against um, just working with all those interested parties out there that are trying to put more regulations on us. Um, in Vision Burrow, we went through digital communication branding, we went through that. Emergency management, um, I think there's $4,000 in there, like Chief Plant mentioned. I, I had 2,500 as a placeholder. Do we wanna get to 10,000 or do we wanna just add 10,000 to the 4,000. I think, I think we should, you know, at least, at least bring it up to 10,000. I mean, we kind of have to wait to see what his policy is going to say, but we should be somewhat prepared that there's going to be some expense to it. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think moving to 10,000 is, is fair. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, get it to 10,000. The tax grant I mentioned, that's to match a million and a half dollar grant with construction 2024. And then uh, that covers that portion of it. And then transfers, public fire protection is spelled out in the PUC rate increase, it's a percentage of the, the water operations. And then contingency, I'll put another $10,000 in for contingency that adds on to the balance that's already there. I think it's, I think the balance and contingency is about 60,000. It just builds every year, but it's good to have. Yeah, it's, it's important to have, yeah. And the debt service is the, I believe it's the USDA loan that's been there for years. I believe the payoffs in a couple of years. That's, that was for the water plant a while back, long, long time ago, way before us. <clears throat> it's not the water bond. So I think that covers transfers and miscellaneous. Uh, I had a few bullet points I want to go go over. Um, I know there is this uh, brought forward about wages and whether a seven and a half is too much. I know Linda did a, a salary a COLA survey. I just went back through what I had in my records. Um, and if seven and a half is too much, what's, what should that number be for, for wages and 
Um, if six six percent is that palatable? Well, you said that the union was getting five, correct? Correct. Yep. Right. The Teamsters unions getting five percent. Um, the fire captains got seven and a half percent. This this I think it's this past fiscal year. Um, police sergeants got seven and a half percent. Patrols four percent. But that was pat this past budget. This current budget, right? This seven and a half will be for fiscal year 24, I believe, off the top of my head. Okay. So I included in an email what um, seven and a half scenario and a 6% scenario looks like. Um, and I mentioned it's not all across the board, so it's just, um, there are some exceptions, like BCM, there's a, the director is a higher wage increase in there than the six or seven and a half percent. So again, I, I threw this out in the email to everyone only because I've been involved in, in the HR group looking at that and we gave a substantial COLA last year. And at some point it's, you know, we have to tailor it down a little bit. I mean, but again, as I told James, that's not a hill I'm going to die on. I just said, you know, should we look at this? If the union is getting five, should we look at maybe something around six, six and a half? Um, but again, I'm very interested in what other people are thinking. I don't feel particularly strongly one way or the other. Um, in terms of the one and a half percent difference. Um, I think that 6% is totally fine. And if other people feel very strongly about seven and a half percent, I'd be willing to uh, agree. But um, based on the raises that everybody else, that the, that the unions got this year, um, I think 6% is is pretty decent. Well, I'll, I'll just speak as my 40 year union member organizer self. Um, if if I was one of the union employees and no one I had a 5% increase and all the bosses were getting a higher increase, there wouldn't be a lot of very happy people, you know, workers there. Um, is, <clears throat> you know, I've always tried to make things as fair as possible is you know when we we look at increases we always try to make things you know as even as possible and you know i, I was a little shocked at the seven and a half percent myself um so is like i said just putting on my union hat is that's where i would be standing yeah i mean kind of like no I, I don't I don't feel particularly strong one way one way or the other but um I'm looking at you know if you're looking at percent to percent the higher level somebody holds they're already going to make a higher wage so if you raise them the same percent they're making more you know that's going to increase seven you know five percent of a hundred thousand is greater than five percent of eighty thousand you know so you, you move that they're still getting more when you look at the dollars um, the only other thing that I would be leery to, and, and, and maybe Tom or Linda, who have more union experience could see that is if we go at non-union at seven and a half this year, that gives the union something to look at next year and say, well, exactly. the other employees, the other employees in town got seven and a half last year. You can dull that out, you know, and now they're going to go after that extra two and a half. That's my only, my only concern. But again, I don't have that. I, and then, you know, the other two of you have more experience in that field than I do. So you would know that more than me, but. That's that's what I that's what I would think of. That's the only thing that really kind of caught me. Yeah, I think that's a, a a significant point because the minute you do, that's already on their radar for one, 
And two, James, I, I like to be, I mean, you're never always going to be equal to equal uh, with the union and non-union. That's just the way of the beast, the way it is. Um, but you got to keep them somewhat in range. And I think a difference of five to seven and a half, where most of the majority of your non-union employees are at a higher level anyways, um, the dollar amount, they're going to figure it out. Um, and, and they're going to know that. And exactly, they're going to come back asking for even more. Um, the other piece that, you know, that I expressed before is I just think you have to group all non-union together. And so whether or not you're a director or you're, you know, work at the transfer station, if you're a non-union employee, it should be the same percentage. It shouldn't be a higher amount for the directors and then for the other non-unions, whatever, whatever the amount turns out to be. I think it should be the same for all non-union. Um, I, I think that, you know, I personally feel that 6% is reasonable. Um, I, I think it's a good wage. It is above the norm. The average, I think that from when I collected the data was around, I think it was 5.3 or something like that average. So we're above the average kind of locally. Um, what James surveyed that, that, you know, he did with the managers, um, there was two huge anomalies up there in Aroostook County. They're doing a 12%, but I also think that they didn't do very much. My understanding is they didn't do very high last year and they're paying a price for it now is they can't fill positions. And they've really backed themselves into a corner and they're trying to get out of that. The other one was Hollowell. And I was like, just kind of dumbfounded because I have no background on that. But if you take those two out, the majority of them go somewhere between four and six with probably on the higher five range. So that's what I, and, and then compare that to the HR around the same thing. So, uh, you know, again, it won't take much to, to also think about, you know, um, we, we did give out some equity raises in the last couple of years to kind of bring our people to where they should be. For the most part, there's a few anomalies, but, um, so I don't think we can justify a seven and a half in that regard because we already did that. Um, but I, and I also, I also agree with Tom is, uh, and Mike is if you put it at seven and a half, the union's gonna come knocking almost, that, that, that's gonna be their starting point next year. And at some point, you know, going like, you know, you're just not gonna be able to sustain that. Um, and I think we can justify, you know, regionally 6%. Okay. Um, so that's that scenario. Um, you have that already in your inbox. Um, the other thing I want to come loop back around to is um, for police, it, did we want to add in the officer that was requested? And what that does to the bottom line, it add, it's a hundred and 29,000 to the bottom line. So I believe in the 6% scenario, the impact to the tax levy, I believe it's almost close to four times an increase to the tax levy. We're at a 6% scenario, you're looking at a tax levy difference of 33,000, you add the 129,000 to it. Uh, there, that was something that the board strongly wants to do then I mentioned at the last meeting, we'd probably look at needing to pull some from a designated fund balance to offset that even further. And I think the, I, I don't wanna speak for Jerry and Tim. I think they put, they obviously, they feel like they're, they need it, but they're anticipating for future needs to anticipate the growth from the edge. We're still a couple of years away from that true density of 265 apartments, we're, we're going to be at maybe 20 or 30. So, you know, my recommendation would be not, not to add the officer, but definitely have it in the back of our minds for the next fiscal year that that may be the time where we need to do it. No, I, 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 I kind of find it interesting, you know, you talk about the growth at the edge and uh, the need to, you know, increase the department because of that. Um, you know, 
for an area that's going to be mostly one and two bedroom apartments and you know they're not going to be cheap apartments i'm sure is i can't foresee a large police presence down there you know for anything um and truthfully you don't see a police presence anywhere in town is you know is that's something that you know when mark and i came on nine years ago we tried pushing for community policing and we've always gotten pushback on it. Um, <clears throat> if they wanted to hire somebody specifically for you know, community policing and being downtown, I'd be all for it. Otherwise, I think they can wait. Any other comments? My, my only thought is, is that we don't really know yet. And I understand they're looking to be prepared for the infrastructure, but things, it's gonna take them another, another year, if not more, to get those apartments up and rented and all of that. So waiting another year is a huge impact. I do think it's, you know, I do agree with Tom. I think there should be more presence downtown, but I, I, I don't see holding off one more year and get them up and built and see what, you know, what kind of traffic starts coming in. Yeah, it'll be a couple of years before the bigger buildings are built. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, no, I'm I'm on I'm on board with that. You know, I, I I think like James said, I think it's just something we want to keep in the back of our heads what that attrition is going to look like too. Um, just from talking to right. the buddy and other departments across the state, I know how hard it is to hire, and I I, I just want to make sure we're prepared that we start the backfill before there's a need for it. But that's not to yeah. say they need to start. You know, even looking nine months from now where they can open something up and maybe if they find somebody before the end of fiscal year, what does it cost? At that point, you're only a couple grand in the hole maybe, and then we budget in 2025. You know, I, I think, so I'm, I'm totally okay with not doing it this year. I just think it is something that we want to make sure we're aware of and, and, and keep that eye out for. Cause it's the other departments are, they're strapped too. And I know it's, we don't have the, you know, we can't compete with, the Yorks, the Kitteries, the, the Elliots of what, what that income is. But when those departments get strapped, we're going to have officers that are going to be like, I, I'll take an extra 25 minute drive for an extra $40,000, you know, for an extra $40,000 in my annual salary. So that's just something that to kind of keep in the back of our head too. Honestly, that's not even the part that I'm most worried about. The part that I'm most worried about is the, um, the age of our officers. Well, that too. That, a lot of them are within five years of being in retirement age. Um, you just hire them back. <laughs> retired, retired, not retired. Yeah, retired. yeah. Some, well, some of them might retire, retire, you know, and just, you know, we can't guarantee they're going to retire and want to stay on, you know. If I had the opportunity to stop working, I'd probably stop working, let me tell you. But, um, yeah, so that that's my 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 concern is just, the age of our officers, how close they are to retirement age. Um, you know, one officer is one thing, but if we have five openings, you know, really close together, we're 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 gonna be very shorthanded for a significant amount of time. And um unless we're willing to really pay through the nose to get people to come here. And then we have to pay all the officers through the nose because that's what they're gonna want. So it's you know, it's a it's definitely an issue. Um, the, the, the other the other thing with uh, the development of the edge is, you know, we will be increasing our tax base also. Yes. As that gets built up, hopefully, you know, you know the, the tax rate on the, the residents won't be as high. So it wouldn't be as big a jump for them, maybe. I, that, is, I that is the goal. Agree. But again, we're, we're a couple of years away from that, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a problem, you know, waiting a year on it. But it's something that we definitely do need to be mindful of. Yeah. That they're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna reach a point. I'm willing to bet 
within five years where we're going to have multiple openings all at once. And uh, it's something that we're going to have to deal with. It's going to be there. So, but yes, I have no problem waiting a year on that. The other um, question relating to police, um, we wanted to do the context of the two and a half percent main PERS match. Um, so in terms of the 6%, are we considering a two and a half percent main PERS part of that 6% or is that a different thing? They've already got the two and a half percent match and then they get the 6% on top of that. I just want to clarity and not surprise anybody with the budget. If we have the ability to to work them together, then I think it should it should be together. It shouldn't be an you know a, a extra pay on top of it as well because as we as we said, it's it's creating an unfair advantage to certain employees where they're getting an extra raise on top of it because now we're paying a portion. So if we can combine it together with their raise, where they're they're it comes out to they're getting their regular well, percentage. We, we've already given them that raise because we made it retroactive right. to when the, yeah. the union employees got it. So they already have that raise. So, you know, is, yeah, I mean, you know, the, we, when we did that, we we're talking again about equity across the board. Um, so is, you know, my feeling is, is that's already, that's already there. You no, know, they have, that's their, Pay that's their rate is if we're given you no know, the other non-union employees six percent is I think we need to give Tim and Jerry the same. Excellent, thank you. Thank you for the clarity. Great. Um, just going down my list here. Um, I I don't know how you'd feel about um, so if we're doing six percent, I, I would we'd like to advocate for seven percent for the assistant library director and the children's librarian. And one of the reasons is that was requested from Sharon at the beginning, or Alex, it was one of the first budgets we did. Um, I don't know how you feel about that. Um, library is one of the lower paid departments. So I just wanna throw that out as a... Do we have any equity information about um you know, comparative numbers to other libraries about the same size and where they fit. I mean, if they're below, you know, an equity line, then that's something that we should consider, but um, we kind of have to have that background information, I think. Okay, I can, I'm sure Sharon has that. Uh, last thing I had, uh, so for BCM director wage, um, I put in, $28, I got some feedback that may not be enough for the market rate, and I don't know. I guess Tommy's here. <laughs> Sorry for the to spur, spur of the last note I have. Um, so just in consideration of, is it 28, um, is it 29, 30, I mean, I don't you, you put in You put in 28, right? Yep. And I just said that comparatively, I was looking at the rate. So there's a couple of different ways you can look at it. And again, I wanted to, I, the reason I sent it out was just to bring up a conversation is that particular individual didn't get market rate in the last couple of years when we were doing it for other departments. So you start looking at, you know, individual ones like the assistant libraries and that one. Um, you look at it in a different sense as well. And you say, Okay, it's going to be twenty-eight dollars an hour, but also, or as opposed to thirty, um, and we're going to a lot money in, you know, uh, you know, travel and increase those lines so that uh, mileage and all that is considered. But I know right now she doesn't put in for mileage. Um, very rare does she do that. If she were to start doing that, um, that the cost would significantly go up. So. Uh, there's many different ways to look at it, but uh, again, I threw it out there as a, as a conversation starter. Um, do you do, uh, I mean, I'm, do you do 28 and then you just say, you know, we're going to add some money, you know, to the, to the travel 
so that if she does travel, it's, you know, it's covered under that, but not under salary or, or just, you know, put it at 30 and not, and not put the money in there as far as the travel goes. Um, you know, she's kind of already expressed, um, you know, what she's doing in a, in a year or so. Uh, I, I think she said a year. I, I'm sorry, it's getting late and I am tired. Uh, but anyways, I threw it out there for conversation as, as I don't think that she's at market market level. And I think that she's the first five years she was here, I was I was very surprised here. And, and James, you just told me that was recently was it was, um, you know, she volunteered her time. She didn't even take a pay. So, uh, you know, I, I just think we should consider putting something in one or the other. But again, open, throwing it out there and a conversation for others. Yeah, I mean, again, if, if you know, we're looking at equity across the board, right? You know, that's that's what it comes down to. So how do how do we compensate that? And yeah, I, I didn't realize that she volunteered. And <laughs> until last week, I didn't realize that it was like not under the town budget either so i mean that's um and that's something we're gonna have to again something we're probably gonna have to look at because come the end of next fiscal it's not gonna be the same <laughs> you know right, exactly and DPM does you know, an we gotta start job. planning on what that's gonna look like when we're trying to recruit somebody else to fill that position right exactly <clears throat> and what we're asking her to do when she does recruit it, she has to maintain her job and train someone at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, and that's not an easy. And, and that's the thing, like we've been fortunate enough that Terry's vested in the town and I'm sure there's thousands of more hours that are put into the town than she's ever gotten compensated for, for what she's doing. Um, that's not what's right. going to be there when <laughs> when we when we take that when someone else takes that over i mean we might find that person we might get lucky but <laughs> that's that's the anomaly now you know that's that's not the norm of what's going to be what's going to be out there and, and i think we have to look at planning for what we're going to need to fill that position not just what we have and, 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 I, and I think that <laughs> No, you have to play the part of Tom here. This is where he would normally chime in, but he can't. <laughs> he just, you're like, I agree with everything that you two just said. It was very well said, and I agree. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely something that we need to uh, plan ahead for because it's gonna it's gonna hit us. Um, and I don't want to have a no media department come no. a year and a half from now. Um, you know, just. It, Bobby Joe doing it by herself, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't see that happening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, my dick pic, yeah. anyways. That's my two cents. So, should we do like 29 and the travel stipend? Try to yeah, that's out. a good way of breaking yeah. it down. Yeah, why don't we do that? Dollar and, add, and add a travel, add money to the travel. I have money for, for mileage. Mileage, yeah. Yep. Okay, well that, that I think that answers all of my questions I had. Lisa, is there is there anything that we think is outstanding? Because I think the goal is to bring everything in for a final. Uh, I think we should meet again, unfortunately, March 7th, but it should be relatively quick just to button everything up. So at least is there anything you can think of or questions that we need we need direction on to make sure that you know, hopefully the next email we send is the final budget. I don't I don't think there's anything else. I think you've covered everything. Did we go over transfers? Yeah, he he blew through it quickly. Yeah, must, there's have, linked it, must there's have linked and missed it. There's some of that <laughs> stuff in transfers that can somebody um, flag down Tom and tell him to come back to his chair? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I didn't quite play that out well. There he is. There he is. <laughs> so is there any is there anything else that you can you guys can think of that we need to clear up? Because I think I feel pretty good about where we're at. And like I said, I think the next email that gets sent out to the board should be the, the final draft or as close to it as possible. It has to be. I mean, we're running out of time. <laughs> I, I, two weeks from now, I think it's two weeks from now, you're going to be signing the warrant. Yep. Right. Yeah. Wow. Just, uh, just to throw this out here, is, is everything good with Mark? We haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. Is he okay? Mark, it's kind of did, Mark, Mark did get to me and he said that um, he's out to do plowing tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes, that sense. makes sense. I just said, just want to make sure he was okay. We hadn't heard him in a couple of weeks. I think, Tom, I'm, I, I think if you pick everything, out of this marathon meeting and, and wrap it up and send us out a draft, then we can at least um yeah you know get an opportunity to look it over and tell you if there's you know anything else. But yeah, it's it's so. yep. and then yeah. we'll I'll, I'll set some concerns or benefit or like if I have any concerns or anything, I'll just throw it out there since I won't be there next week. But at least that way you guys can hash it out and whatever's I mean I, I but I feel good with what we've discussed. I think we've had some good dialogue around things over the last few weeks and I mean, honestly, James, again, kudos to you and the department heads because, you know, it's I know that's not easy and in, in going through it. And, um, you know, we had questions, yes, but more clarity questions or, or explain this versus I don't agree with this or, or, you know, it's more that tell me why. So I think you guys did a great job at, at putting this together this year. Thank you. Yeah. yeah you and, and Lisa, too. I mean, uh, yes. Sorry, Lisa. Yes, Lisa. No, that's fine. <laughs> James did a lot of work on it. I've been so busy with with um, the conversion to main water that he's been pretty much on his own. Sorry, James. I always, I'll like I'll do my stuff and I'll check check in with her and if you know things are aligned, I feel good. If not, it's good. It works works well. It's been a good process. I I, I appreciate uh, all the feedback and just as as excited like like Steve Eldridge would just say like this is the funnest part where you just you're planning for next year, you're planning for the future and making things happen. So it's a lot of exciting things going on. Hey guys, I, I spent 10 hours in the emergency room with my brother-in-law, I'm signing off. Good night. It's okay. Um, Good night. Good night. Good night. What, do, what do we got left? That that's actually it. it, I mean, that's, that's it. Yeah. Yep, so. that's it. Um, so we've already adjourned. Do we have to adjourn again? No. Okay. No, just say right. good night. All right. <laughs> good night. Good night. Thank We're you guys. We're coming back on March 7th, right? Yeah, next week, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Everybody except for yeah, I'll see you guys in two. Mike. <laughs>